Um, it's going to fit the same exact sign that's on there. It was 24, 24 inches. 24 inches by 12. I think. By 12. Well, is that on the roof? No, it's uh, on the, on the okay. side of the building the building the above the door. It's the exact same size as the one is there now that the uh, Burning Heart Yoga has. What's, what's the address of this lo of location? One this one's actually 191 Russell Street. Did you say 24 inches by 12 inches? No, 12 feet. 24 feet, feet by 12 feet. Yeah. 24 inches by 12 feet. Yeah, two, two feet wide okay. and okay. 12, 12 feet long. Yeah. Uh, is that going to be the that's the name of the business village laundromat? Yes. Yep. How many gallons a day of water do you think going to discharge out of this thing? Just curious. These lo uh, these washers are like highly efficient. They mm -hmm. use four to five gallons per load. Mm. As opposed to like your home. Washers is like 20 gallons. Really? 24. We got what, 20 machines? Mm-hmm. Okay, so 20 washers and four, seven uh, stackable dryers. So if you're working on the wall. What brand? I'm just curious. What brand are the washers? Um, they're not made tag. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're commercial washers. Dexter. Yeah. Dexter. They're Dexter. Oh, okay. Dexter and Speed Queen. Oh, that's right, too. He's got mm -hmm. some speed queens in there, too. Okay. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for a change of use from uh, cleaners to village laundromat with no exterior alterations and signs not to exceed current dimensions. That's correct. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who's to the second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we're all set. Okay, we're all set. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. We'll let the building inspector know that we've waived site plan approval. You okay. still have to talk to him about what you're going to do. Yeah, what okay. you're going to do. Yep. So, thank you. Um, anything else? Oh, we're doing one. Yeah. Okay. I know. So that's even better. Uh, uh, yeah. Reorganize? Reorganize? Yep. Yeah. We'll just take. I think it ought to remove uh, planning board procedures up from 3A. I'm going to reorganize the board. I move Jim Maximus to be chairman, Bill the wire clerk. Second. <laughs> um, and everybody, uh, I'm also uh, representative of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So the CPA. And CPA. Yeah, I don't think there are any other active committees at the moment. That's correct. Yeah. <coughs> okay. You need to need an alternate for the people? Uh, that, yes, but that's through the select board. Oh, okay. So uh, we want to recommend, uh, um, and I'll recommend Mark Dunn to the select board for appointment as the PVPC alternate. Okay, so I'll make a motion to, well, well, just, that's the slate. That's the slate. Joe, want to make your motion again? Yeah. Jim Maximowski, Chairman. Bill Dwyer, Clerk. Bill Dwyer. Bill Dwyer, Plan. And Bill Dwyer, C. C. Oh, you want to put that in? Yes. Scribe, like CPA, and recommend it done to PVPC Alter. That's the motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Now, for people that are here for the public hearings, what Mark say? Hearings? Yeah. Oh, when the corner comes up for that, I didn't know one. Yep. The, uh, because we had a conflict on both the fire station and the uh, North Had the Exotic Auto Garage. And that member was able to vote. We, there were four members required to vote um, unanimously to approve those two projects. And because 
he was John was replaced by Mark, and Mark was not a sitting planning board member for those public hearings. Both of those public hearings will start from scratch tonight with the entire presentation. That is a what that is the recommend the written rec written recommendation we got from town council. We don't need to re-advertise or re-notice the neighbors. We notify the neighbor, but both public hearings will start from scratch tonight. So bear with us because that's what has to be done by town council. Yes. Wasn't there also a recommendation that if the new planning board member had a chance to review the tapes that it was no, no. There is a law on that. You have to be a sitting member to review those tapes. Oh. He was not a sitting member. Yeah, if you're a sitting member and you miss a meeting or you miss several meetings and they're on TV, he can watch those meetings, sign a form that says that he or she watched those meetings. Okay. But if you're not a sitting member, that doesn't work. And I specifically included that when I asked Joel Bard, and he says, you're right, they have to start from scratch. Okay. Okay, because West Hampton is under the same thing mm -hmm. with a couple of, uh, they replaced half the planning board, I guess, two members. They did. And they had a couple, pro a couple of hearings in the similar process, and they've got to start all from scratch because you just can't sign it for them. <coughs> okay. okay, that's the caveat. You've got to be a city member. Okay, thank you. Um, you're welcome. So, just bear with us. First up for, for uh, is Desco, because all we needed from them was a letter on the drainage, and that should be a quick, um, hopefully quick, to get, that, get, get to that and get your approval so we'll make for whatever it, it might be in works. Sure. And then we'll do River Drive Auto Body, and the fire station will be last. Okay. Uh, uh, these are some updated uh, versions. Mark will explain to you what we had. There's some revisions that we had to modify the modification we had made to the range. Okay. So, I guess for the record, my name is Mark Reef, here in surveys representing Tesco here tonight. Um, we like to present two sets of updated plans based on uh, meetings that we've had with Conservation Commission as well as peer review relative to conservation issue um, and performance standards from Doucette Associates. So these are your... Okay. You'll be right there. Okay. And a final stormwater permit. I'm sorry, stormwater management report okay. that was requested. I also, I think you got a copy of the revised O&M plan that was sent out, but I have copies of that if you'd like. Um, oh, operation, operation maintenance, maintenance plan. Yes, yes. So I have yeah, extra right. copies if people mm -hmm. like that, as well as the planning board. I'm sorry. The planning board letter from Doucette. Does everyone have a copy of that? I do. Okay. And then just today we received a copy, which I think Bill has a copy of the Conservation Commission peer review, which yes. they requested. Yeah, we just got that. Just yeah. want to make sure that you're all up to speed. Right. We need a copy of the uh, do set of the ready point. Yep. Just one copy of that for the record. Okay. Thank you. This is their report. I got the I got the conservation one. The other one you talked about. Oh, oh, the your planning board one. Yeah. Um. That's the that's I the conservation one. Was that was multiple pages. That in there with that one. Oh, no, here it is. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Here's the planning board. Copy. So we have um, been working with Doucette as a peer review as well as Conservation Commission. By way of information to the audience as well as to, to Mark Dunn, yep. the uh, the original presenter, Heritage, has, in, because we do not have a town engineer, we ask for peer review to verify the statistics, the drainage, and various nuances in the uh, site plan. So that's where the site plan review comes in. Whose idea so, was that originally? Pardon? Whose idea was that originally yours, wasn't it? Yes. Well, well because... Still, yeah. Uh, 
Before Jim was on, we didn't have an engineer that could count that far. No, but right. the, certainly the the discussion, especially with drainage, always comes sure. into play, and and it's much more sophisticated now than it ever has been. So that's why correct peer review. Correct. So uh, for for uh, Mark, the new member, um, well, he, he can't vote tonight. He can't vote. Okay. okay. So. so so, you're, you're so the heck with him. Right? Yeah. Well, don't, don't forget about it. I don't mean it that way, but because he wasn't involved yeah. in the first one, and there's no sense you need to go back to the beginning because you have yes. four members that can vote. Okay. Okay. Great. So the four of you know where we're talking about, and, and you know, so know what have you in and out? What have you changed so, since yes. the last time we met? So had. since we since we uh, last met with you, there have been some changes relative to some additional buffers around the proposed pond. Um, within the stormwater uh, management uh, requirements, it requires a one meter or 33 foot buffer between the budding property lines to the pond. So that the previous plan that we reviewed with you um, show, did not show that. So now we have a 33 foot buffer that runs along the property line to um, uh, North Maple LLC, which is located to the north of the site. So in doing so, if you notice from the original plan, the, the pond and stormwater system is kind of moved back further on the lot to facilitate that buffer. Additionally, um, we have installed a pipe, a stand pipe, that will connect to the drainage system within the street because the pond needs to be drained every 10 years thereabouts for maintenance. And the original plan, we didn't have a standpipe that would be able to to drain it. We were relying on sump pumps to be able to drain it. They felt it would be better if we could have a standpipe and a hard piped system in which we were able to do that. So that gives the ability, if needed in 10 years, to maintain the pond, that, that work can be done. Um, it's done. The, the, um, other issue or change that is to be done is between what is known as a four bay in the pond that stormwater is conveyed through the drainage channels into a four bay and then eventually gets into the pond area. We've made those widers, the berms between the four bay and the pond themselves and rip wrap them so that um, we have 15 foot wide so that uh, maintenance vehicles, mini excavators, and so forth, can get around the pond to do any maintenance that is necessary. So we've kind of made that modification with that. Um, so those are kind of the major changes to the stormwater system and the, the proposed pond in the back. The parking lot on either side has not changed. The building location has not changed. Um, the only substantive plan changes is relative to the stormwater in the pond. So talk to us about the standpipe. What is, who suggested you have a standpipe? Uh, it's within the regulations uh, that DEP has for stormwater management and under a pond. And it's got a gate valve to it. So the standpipe and I can show you the detail of that. But well, the question that I have is where is it going? So it is going into the existing drainage system that runs along Venture Way, and then eventually it goes into these large ponds. It goes out in the back. Okay. It doesn't go into the Down town. here. Oh, it doesn't go into the town. Oh, it's way too low to go into town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It goes into the existing, there's okay. three different stormwater ponds on the on a particular 14 feet, acres. Wait, are you 50 feet below River, um, North or South Maple Street? North Maple Street? Uh, I would say at least that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah at least that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole industrial park drains down to these three existing ponds, stormwater ponds that were constructed 10 years ago for the site. And that standpipe is connected through a pipe to an existing drain that discharges to this drainage pond right here. And so those plans have been changed, that sheet has been changed to reflect that. 
That's the utility plan. Yeah, right. That would be a chain and lock gate valve. Yeah, it's a it's a gate valve um, that's that um, is shown on the utility plan. It's it's the gate valve is similar to a water gate that you would have for a water system. So you need a key to okay. turn it. Uh, it's got a cover to it, so that within the system. Um, they're going to exercise it every couple of years to make sure it doesn't seize up. I was going to say maybe 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 want to go more than that. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, to make sure it doesn't seize up. But you would need a, a gate valve key, typical to any water okay. department. That, you know, so that's going to drain the contents of the pond into right. the street system. Yes. But does that mean the pond is above the street system? Yes. Yeah. So it is. It's all going to be gravity. Correct. It's yeah. all gravity. It's all gravity. Correct. Okay. Yes, it is. Any other questions from the board? What do you think? Yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> what are they going to do for collecting the salt from the snow pond? Are they going to put it into those wetlands? No. Um, or you, you can add that to your question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The the salt from the system itself goes through a series of water channels, channels that go around the property before it ever gets to the pond itself. It gets filtered through the four bays within the two ponds. Um, before it gets into the pond, uh, it settles into the pond area. That's why we have to do some maintenance in the future. Uh, how, how, does it, how does it settle if it's some of dissolved already? Within the storm water, um, it goes into the pond and settles into the pond itself. Um, well, once salt's dissolved, it doesn't go back into solid form. No, no, but it's 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 in, within the four bay, within the four bay section of it. The four bay has a berm mm -hmm. between it, so it's all that. Typical four bay is to take out sediment um, and other floatable material and keeps it in the four bay. And then it goes eventually during a heavier storm event like we had uh, the last few days, then it goes over the riprap berm and then into the pond. The four bays are made to settle that out, and maintain it into the into that area. Mark, it did it did come up as a question. Uh, with the Conservation Commission and we we kind of covered a little bit uh, with a note on the landscaping plan that indicates that uh, the use of sodium chloride uh, uh, for ice control be minimized that was the, the kind of the quote that we, we put on the plan and uh, also uh, consistent with public highway and safety requirements and um, we also call for the use of commercial fertilizers because we're in the buffer and everything else uh, uh, and other leachable materials uh, not be used in the amounts which may result in groundwater contamination. Now it's a, it's a pretty general statement admittedly, uh, but it's, it's kind of a red flag to the owner that, you know, so, some of the materials used on the site be kept to a real minimum because of their the adjacency to the wetland areas. Oh, oh you can. Yeah. Good. Are they giving you a maintenance program and a reporting schedule? <coughs> yes, we did. Yep, I just gave it to yep. tonight. We Who had else? originally, we had originally um, provided it, but we haven't updated it. Who else does that, does that go to the DPW and the Conservation Commission? Uh, it go it goes to the Conservation Commission yeah. um, as part of their filing in the Planning Board. I assume the DPW would have a copy of it too. Well, are, is a copy going to be sent to them? They, they, the three of them should. They, be they get a copy of, of the site plan. No, I didn't talk about the site plan. They talk about the maintenance record and the, and the, the work being done. Who do those reports go to? <coughs> the DPW should be involved in all that. We can provide them a copy of the O&M. Yeah. Um, 
the uh, so that we can do that. So it's in your interest to keep it maintained because you don't want it to fail. Correct. Uh, it's been the Conservation Commission's uh, a point of a, a, a viewpoint that this be readily available and made a, a, a part of the uh, the conditions that the owner is aware of this operating uh, manual and that they keep it on file for you know so that will future be maintenance the, in the wetlands order correct okay. yes yeah they we were at a meeting the last meeting we were at they went through a whole uh, uh, a long meeting with some of the car dealerships that weren't you know uh, dealing with a certain open space areas and it got to us and <laughs> they lowered the hammer on us to kind of make sure that we had this O and M up to snuff, and then added a few uh, caveats into it that we have included and followed up with for this manual. The, the only reason to, when you do a maintenance on the system, the only reason to issue reports to multiple to multiple departments is not that we want to have a lot of record and a lot of everything else. It's that if you issue it to several town departments, mm -hmm. then it makes the owner be aware that. I got to send this to three departments. Right. Probably two of them won't care about it, but one of them might. And if I don't get it to them, then I'm going to be in trouble. So sure. simply by issuing that report that says this was done, et cetera, then at least it keeps whoever the owner is or the, whoever's doing the maintenance on a property, mm -hmm. keeps them on the ball for the best way to put it. Sure. Right. right. <coughs> so, and know, that right. revised O&M plan that I just gave you, talks about making sure and the owner has a copy of this and has acknowledged a copy of this already yep. back through an email and I believe that you the board was copied on right. um, that she has received it um, so. and is aware of the, the plan and requirements so um, in, in the motion I simply I, you know like like to see in the motion that copies be sent to the conservation DPW and planning board Certainly. Enough said. It simply keeps them on the ball. Like it keeps them on the ball. Sure. Okay. Not a problem. All right. Yeah. Compliance reports. So they're, they're operation and maintenance plan? Operation maintenance report. Yeah, operation maintenance plan compliance report. Yeah. What? To DP, DPW, DPW conservation. conservation. Yep. <coughs> okay. Okay. Motion. Anything else? No. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the application for site plan approval based upon the following findings. Project satisfies the general purposes of the bylaw. Projects is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Intended uses are not prohibited by the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Uh, what is the revision, uh, your, your latest plan? Sure. So the revision dates are noted on the front of it, but it's April 2nd is the last revision date to the plans. April 2nd. Correct. Over 2019. And I'll just see what for a second. I, I got a smaller copy. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I just want to see what the you caption keep is. Okay. Disc code diagnostic equipment. And. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't believe there are any waivers requested. Yes, there were two. Two, okay. So the two waivers that we did request are the parking in the front of the building and the traffic study. Okay. That's in the 50-foot front setback. Correct. Plus they can't with, with a property, they're kind of limited to park in the back. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, <laughs> so compliance would be the, the, the plans as revised 4-2, um, grant waivers for parking in the 50-foot front setback and uh, waive the traffic study. Uh, affirmative requirements would be a copy of the operation and maintenance plan compliance reports uh, be sent to the planning board, the DPW, and the Conservation Commission as they occur. 
Uh, copies have been dis uh, distributed as provided in the site plan. The uh, site plan cri review criteria are satisfied. Um, planning board places the following conditions. Design features um, are considered an integral part of the plan uh, and will be considered a violation of the plan if, unless, if they are changed without prior approval. Uh, approval is Actually, we don't need that one there. Um, let's see. Sign detail. We just hit, we did sign sign detail. It it's part of the is there in plan. There. Yes. Yeah. It, we showed uh, signage that would be uh, on the building, as per the architectural plans, and we also indicated that we were going to have uh, a small uh, kind of wood monolith out in front that was going to have. Uh, in large letters, the address number. Okay, so similar to the rest of the uh, sign detail is a, a, uh, is approved per plans. Uh, landscaping to be installed as shown on the plan. Any outdoor lighting fixtures shall be shielded. No storage trailers, shipping containers, temporary or permanent storage is allowed. Approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission. Uh, the water commissioners, board of selectmen, uh, and state agencies. Um, project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant, uh, and a certificate of compliance issued by the consultant will be required before a permanent certificate of occupancy can issue. Uh, maintain a six inch depth of topsoil and all unpaved surfaces to retain irrigation. Identify front yard setbacks. And that's it. What about the uh, erosion septic control? Uh, that's a separate. Be separate. Okay. Yeah, because this is the site. This is the special plan. permit. Okay. So I'll do the erosion. Motion and a second on site. Motion on the site plan approval. Do you have a second? Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We have motion passes for with one at one not participating. And uh, then. Erosion. Um, erosion and sediment control is not a special permit, so um, um, I'll make a motion to approve the application under section 24 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw for an erosion and sediment control for stormwater management permit based upon the following findings and is confirmed by the letter from Doucette. Um, provisions of the bylaw are applicable. The project is not exempt. Proposed site work is consistent with the provisions of the bylaw. Proposed site work satisfies the performance standards of uh, the bylaw, and the proposed site work meets the design standards of the bylaw. That's the motion. That's the motion. Have a second. Second. Motion second. All in favor. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0. One, one, part, no, one, not one, one, one not participating. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So if I can have the desk. Exotic Auto, 373 of her drive. Whatever you want to call it. Chairman. Yes. Um, I gave you a packet. Yes. To do deal with Mr. Dunn as a new member yes. participating in this. Mr. Dunn has a statement to Good. Yeah, I but I also have a statement to Well, Mr. Dunn, let, let Mr. Dunn make his statement. Okay, that's fine. Um, question was raised whether I should recuse myself because I had a campaign contribution from the owner of the company that's coming before us. Um, so I have been in touch with um, verbally and written this morning with the uh, attorney at the State Ethics Committee uh, Commission and she has written a statement that um, it's, it's not uh, a reason to recuse yourself because of a campaign donation. Um, I have no other prior 
relationships or dealings with them. Um, and there is, uh, she quotes that it's not even required, but I've also uh, additionally done a disclosure, which she said was not required, but just to further explain that I have no connections. So uh, I will intend to. Mr. Chairman. Yes. <coughs> Did you hand out that, that packet that I gave you in that same page, remember? In, the, in that packet, I feel Mr. Dunn would be in conflict because he knew prior to the election, and he stated in the Facebook and the news media, that he, if elected, he would be sitting to vote for the exotic uh, proposal. And yet, he did not make any attempt to return the $250 that he accepted. He signed the, the, the acceptance of that report on 4-1-2019 that, that was handed into the town clerk. And it perceives that he took that to sway possibly his vote or what, whatever could be said on that. And I feel he, he is in conflict when he did that because he had the opportunity knowing that this was coming back for a vote. He knew that. He talked about it. And yet he made no attempt to return that. If I was sitting there, people asked me, do you want a donation? I said, no. Because then it comes back to bite you later. And this may bite him later because I feel he's in conflict. I feel I have to report this, the whole version, with all the supporting evidence, everything, the tapes, everything that's relevant to it, not only to the State Ethics Commission, but the Office of Campaign Political Finance. Those rules are strong rules and they're stringent rules. And if he does, you know, just let the cards fall where they may. You're, you're free to do that, but the Ethics Commission has ruled that the proper forms were filed by his campaign and that he's not in conflict. It so won't hurt you, Mr. Chairman, the other members. So we're, we're, going to go, we're going to go forward on that because we have it. It's up to him, not okay. to you. Are we ready? We are ready. Okay. I'm Randy Iser from Harold Eaton Associates. Tom Quinlan Jr. has uh, been before the board. I guess it doesn't matter since this is a whole new process. So, all right. So, exotic auto sales and repair was before the board several months ago to get site plan approval for a pre-existing non-conforming use change <coughs> of ownership that was approved by the planning board and the select board for used car sales and repair. What we're here for this evening is to attempt to get approval to raise the roof on the building. We're not changing the site at all. The proposal is to raise the roof up four feet due to the fact that uh, cars being put on lifts can't be lifted up high enough inside the existing building. Now I know we are starting from scratch here, but at the last meeting I was standing in the back and the uh, phrase bait and switch came out, uh, which to me insinuates somebody was being deceitful at the first proposal for this and that is nowhere near reality I know I had no idea this was ever going to happen I'm sure the owner had no idea he was going to come back and try to propose to get this roof raised uh, you can uh, accuse him of being overly excited and not thinking things through but I don't think you can accuse him of trying to be deceitful uh, that being said we want 
to raise the roof four feet to make it easier to work on vehicles. Hang on, please, Joe. And Mr. Quinlan has a couple of plans. And I don't know if, did you put those on the table, Tom? Yes. About what the building's going to look like versus what it looks like now. Be the third section would be existing building. You got it. It's, it's in the, yes, it's in, the, uh, it's in somewhere. Yeah, the third table. Okay, so it's in here. Oh, okay. So there's an exist, a picture of an exist, the existing building, and a picture of what's being proposed. Three feet last time. Now it's four oh, feet. It's, no, it's, it's always, always been, been four feet. It's always been four always feet. Been four yeah. feet. <laughs> so the tower is going to be blue. It, it it's not a tower. I actually have the definition of the tower. Um, it's an overframe. Most new residents, business have it as a focal point. It's not outside the envelope. It's an overframe that's below the yeah. highest point. Before we get into that, uh, Randy, I drove by the site, and there seems to be a marker in in here, uh, in delineating the uh, the property line as a a stake with a flag on it. Okay, I don't know. Uh, it's I, situated here, not here. Are you sure it's a stake with a flag on it? It's not a, a little nail. No, in the pavement. Stake with a flag on it. I, I have to go look at it, Joe, but I doubt that we're that far off. This, this, all this stuff was done accurately located. I will go verify what you're asking, but I believe that you're looking at something that's not the property corner. But it was brought to me by, uh, yeah. by a neighbor. Okay, by yeah. attention, so I went by and looked at it. Okay. So I'll go look at it tomorrow morning. Because it does sure. change the whole site. Yes, it would. Yeah. And that's why I doubt it's correct, okay. but I will verify that. So, you, Mr. Zgradic asked if the quote-unquote tower, whatever you want to call it, is going to be blue. The intent is for it to be blue. The blue is in the color palette, so it is an allowed color. The side of the building used to be the same blue, and they toned it down to aqua. Is that, is that correct? I don't know that. <coughs> so, wasn't it? But, first of all, be the sign exotic. Uh, this happens many, many times. People increase the size of a roof line so that you can put a sign up there. To me, this is above the roof line, so the sign will have to go. Okay. So you said something about that earlier. The sign, yes. Any, That's gone. Yeah. Any sign okay. The sign is going in. The last time I mentioned that uh, I would not be in favor of it with the the blue tower. I still call it a tower. And you were going to say you were going to, you came back with another plan that was going to be white because once again, this is not Route 9. Even though it's zoned business, it's a limited business in, in the neighborhood. And, uh, but I don't see the, the white as you said you were going to bring it. So, okay, I just have that as an option. Sorry. Okay, so once again, the tower is still there with the signs is still there. So that the exotic would be gone. This, this, the sign would, would not. And this does nothing to the functional part of the lift or anything like that. It's to draw attention. Uh, the, the tower, is that yeah. you're, what you're asking? I, I don't believe that it does anything for the functional part of the lift. Is that correct, That's Mr. Correct. Gentleman? Okay. Um, I appreciate what you're saying, but um, I have a question back. This is an allowed color, so I mean, what, where does, you know, I, I don't want to be argumentative, I'm just curious, how far can a board go and say you can't have that color? Once again, we're talking about the rights of the individual to choose a color whatever he wants, and the rights of the neighbors that were concerned about the appearance of it. 
when it first came about. So it is that balance, that delicate balance, and so you're fighting for your client, but the neighbors, I'm sure, will have a say-so, too. It, it, you know, it's, it's, like you said, beginning of the meeting, it's a, a pre-existing non-conforming use. Does this make any more non-conforming? Yeah, probably not. But it's a matter of fitting in with the neighborhood. You know, everything around here is residential. Mm -hmm. The nearest business is quite a ways away. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's where we're coming from right now. Okay. Trying to get harmony among everybody else so that it just fits in with the neighborhood and doesn't look, it doesn't stand out that much. You know, the last when we had the last meeting, there was there was uh, four things. There was a no tower, white, a recovery manhole plan, and a lighting plan. So, um, okay, the lighting is on the approved, previously approved plan. Right. So that's not changing. The lighting is not changing. The lighting is not changing. Okay. Just for Mark's sake, so where's the lighting going to be? Is that That's this? correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Roll down lighting yeah. kind of so thing, right? There are one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there any, there's no, there's nothing in the parking lot, right? There's no poles. No poles, no, everything's on the building to keep it up far, as far away from yeah, the right. neighbors as possible. This is this, this got the green space over here at the corner. Kind of, the green space is put in the corner, Mark, because when it used to be the old Lesko's garage, um, this is Cummins Road. We're all familiar with the area. With the area. I was up there. Um, Cummins Road at this intersection at time was probably 100 feet wide <laughs> because people would come down a road and literally just, they would literally, I'm not exaggerating, they would be cutting here as it, because I grew up on Cummins Road at the other end and I can remember cars cut, cutting, <laughs> cutting there, I mean they, they, he would have cars, there were cars that would hit, were barely hit. Um, he would park cars there to try to defer them, um, but if he didn't, if the cars were ever moved, Cummins Road made a, not exaggerating, would, cut, would just miss the building. So we said by putting the green space in, at least you keep Cummins Road where it should be, and he has his lot there. He was almost a resident of North Amherst. Yes. Would that green space have plantings? Well, or is it just grass? Right. Well, because if you put plantings there, there it's going to interfere, interfere with the sight line. Right. Um, yeah. I was just thinking if it was ground cover, something that would show up, because otherwise when you plow... Well, it's going to be grass. So it, it'll, be, it'll be a... Cr it, and it won't be plowed, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. The owner will acquiesce to white. Okay. So... Okay. What else do we have? Just yes, right in the back. It's, uh, hello, I'm a neighbor. My name is Pat Quinlan. I wanted to know if the tower in the front actually increases the footprint of the building as a point of information. Uh, no, no, it seems no. to be within no, it the footprint. It seems to be within the it's, footprint. It's, of it's the held back in the building. It doesn't it project it, out. It's recessed okay. into the building. We are not changing the footprint of the building. Otherwise, that would open up a whole other can of worms. So no storage, no uh, stairs up there or anything. Uh, no, it's just, just going to be roof, just to raise the roof enough. Raise the roof. Yeah. I'm fine with Another that. Another question. I'm fine with that. Yes, sir. So I just I'm on. We're on Two Cummins Road, and uh, we just wanted to know what what's the purpose of this tower? The focal point <coughs> for the entrance, uh, but most houses have you know it's. An overframe. It's not a tower. A tower would would be over the uh, peak of the roof. This is just an overframe. You know, to add more detail to the to the property, which is not required for the lift. It's, it's all trust. It's just an overframe. It doesn't come out of the envelope at all. Is there is there also you spoke of, uh, we've been talking about some type of in the green space area? I don't know if the plans have been redone. But putting up, you know, some arbor vitae or fencing along that area between the side garage and the corner of Cummins and 47. Not in the green space. No. It'll be just big grass. If anything, might be some low juniper. But if you put any kind of a bush or shrub there, it's going to grow up 
and block the view from Cummins Road from coming out to River Drive. So the best you can do for a shrub would be like a very low growing juniper or something along that idea. Um, no I mean, I, I can see the point of why you'd want to put block it, but right. it, it's, it's, I prefer just to see some grass growing there that's mowed Actually, only because to keep it delineated from the, from his, from keep the property separate from Cummins Road. Like I said, I was, as a kid growing up, I remember always cutting across their property there. So no fencing, no, no Arbor VA, nothing No, like no, that. Arbor Vitae is going to grow up. There's no, no such thing as a low growing Arbor Vitae. Yeah. Okay. Do you like remember we have a bylaw now on that? We do have a bylaw. It's hardly ever enforced, but that's uh, you you, the site the is. Yeah, it, you can't inhibit at the site from people making a turn like Jim was indicating. <laughs> Mr. Jim, Mr. Yep. Yeah. Is there going to be a berm in that green to not allow cars to drive because they'll still drive over grass? But if it's bermed up eight inches, they're not going to drive over. They're going to have troubles with their car. I would, I, I think that what is proposed is to berm that because it's all pavement underneath it. We're going to have to berm it up yeah. enough to get it, you know, six or eight so inches worth of topsoil in there to, so that, that it'll grow. So yes, that Thank will you. happen. And also, Jim, the operating hours, are there going to be a set hours and the lights in the surrounding area of the building that the neighbors don't have to be looking at them all night long? That's already been approved at the previous yes, I believe it's in the site plan approval. Right. I'm sure there's something in there yeah, the to that effect. 8.30 to 5.30 p.m. 8.30 to 5.30 p.m. in the original. And, and the lights, when will they go off? Will the light stand that building on any long? Where do you have well, one light is gonna be on because we have cars outside. Yeah. One small light, but if what you're saying is true, what we previously approved is irrelevant. Okay. How's that? You gotta open the whole full, whole hearing up from the beginning again. I don't believe so. What he just said. What's that? They're referring to the fact that things were previously approved, not that we wouldn't approve them again, but if what you said from the town council is true, then anything voted on previously on this project is null and void. No. 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 I'm not sure we get four people. That's right. That's right. Sorry. That's right. <coughs> Take that back. Yeah. Is there ten? I'm sorry. Is the intent to have a light on all night, or could that be a motion sensor light? Well, we can have a motion sensor, you know, if the light uh, is going to bother. You're looking to deter yeah. cr criminal activity. Yeah, we'll have some cars outside there. Cars for sale here. He's concerned right. with that. So if these lights would be the ones he's talking about leaving on. Mm -hmm. And he's been very receptive to any issues with neighbors. There was a problem with a, one of the lights on the front of the building that was on all night. Is that right, Paul? Yeah. And he, he was in, out of the country. Somebody called him and he sent somebody to get it fixed right away. So if any of the neighbors have any issues, they can talk with him. I'm sure he'll be more than amenable to, to work something out that's reasonable. Yes, sir, you had a question. Um, I actually have a couple of comments. I'm Bill DeWire. I'm a butter to this property. Um, yes, this is a pre-existing non-conforming use, but this is a much more intense use than the grandfathered use it is bootstrapping off of. That gentleman had, did all his work inside, as far as I know. He didn't have any cars outside, or very rarely. So, yeah, it is more non-conforming by the virtue of the number of vehicles here. The zone was downzoned. What once upon a time, Route 47 was general business from roughly the elementary school to the Sunderland town line. It was downzoned to um, uh, limited business, which does not allow automotive uses. Uh, so this is just you know, it's kind of slipping, slipping back in. It is going to be more than Lesko's was doing. It's going to be more than that guy repairing Corvettes was doing. And um, the original pr representation was there'd be no exterior alterations. Uh, and now they're looking for an exterior alteration. And I understand the rationale 
why you say you want it. They, you, you can't accommodate a modern lift in there. But my response to that is that's something you should have thought about before you bought it. Is it suitable to your needs? And apparently it's not suitable to your needs in its existing form. And <coughs> anything you do to stretch it, the other guy, the person whose use was, whose grandfathering you are following, didn't need to put, didn't need to extend the roof. Um, I think this is getting more nonconforming than, um, I think basically we just go back to the previous approval and let it go with, let it go at that level. Yes, Joyce. I have to dispute you because in having been on the select board many, many times we had to bring in the Lescos uh, for overuse of their property there mm -hmm. with the junk cars, mm -hmm. the cars that weren't kept, the property wasn't kept up, the cars were parked in the street. Um, they did not conform, the Lescos well, did I, not, I, I, and, and you, yeah. you know that I understand by living that. there. But the, the grandfathering he's, uh, piggybacking off of is the guy who bought it from the Lesco's at the foreclosure. If the gap between when Lesco's moved and when <laughs> this gentleman bought the property would have been more than the three years and the use would have been lost. He is piggybacking on the, um, I Jack forget the name of Kirschless. the guy. Kirschless. Kirschless. Jack yes. Kirschless. Yes. Yeah. He's piggy piggybacking on his mm -hmm. use of the property mm -hmm by keeping it in automotive sales and service. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but he was doing, I, I don't know what his license said, but he was doing, he, he was restoring- His own cars. His own, he was, his well, own he vehicles. was restoring vehicles. And right. whether he was selling them or not, I guess he was selling an occasional mm -hmm. one. But the scale at which he was operating, and that's something I raised to the board when it was voted on the first time, the scale of that grandfathered operation is, you know, this is 10 times the scale of what the prior owner that you're relying on was doing. And that's where I think you are getting into the more nonconforming. But I think in, in reference to the previous, I know Jack Kirschless was totally different than Mr. Lesko and, and his son that owned the business also. I think this would certainly be a better representation of uh, of the property itself, if it was going to be used as some form of dealership, it would be clean, kept up. Um, they're down there on Route 9, they're putting in mulch, they plant flowers, they try to keep their property decent and, and good repairs down there, and I think that they would well, I still, that. still do did, that did, for did, up did there. Kirsch, did Kirschless have the right to operate as Valesco's did? Yes, they no. did. Mm -hmm. He did not have a class two. Mm -hmm. Who did he have a class two? Who, Kirschless? Yeah, of course yeah. he did. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, yeah. so, so yeah. my question I, I hope so, because we have yes, bills of sale that we wish we based on. But he didn't have any cars that My point is, he, he had no. the right to operate as Lesko did, and if right. he did, in fact, have the right, then that right. But he did not keep any cars on premises outside. That was not my question. He had the right to. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think we're getting off point here. As I said earlier, the. The site plan, the use has been approved. All we're asking for is to ch change the building. Yeah. You, had a, you had a comment, Tim? No, I was reiterating exactly what yes. Joyce said. Because okay. There was many, many times we were up there. Getting back to the original stuff, the tower. What's the opinion on the tower on the front of the building? I mean, I think we're making a compromise by allowing them to come back. I don't like the tower. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I, I don't like the tower either, so I they think... Take out the tower. Take out the take tower. Out the tower. Yeah. Okay. No tower. We want to do and the work. color is going to be as what color you want. Tower. What color? color? Color was color. This one like, like this was recovery manual. Did you have? <laughs> well, it's not. A, it's, it's not a change in use. That was going to be my argument. Do we have to? Do we do the plumbing inspector again met with? And as long as there's no plumbing that occurs, there would be no. Are they doing detailing required. and cleaning and stuff? And, 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 and are they doing detailing and cleaning on the property? We, we can we can go back because we opened a public hearing. We can go back and add that. Okay. Okay. So yes, we can. 
Are you doing detailing? You're, you're, you must be doing detailing, cleaning. If in the they garage. were mentioning detailing, cleaning, yeah. and that's and, when and, they and that's going into the old drain hole, drain manholes that were in the garage, which are probably going directly into the ground. There's no grease traps. And that is not grandfathered in. There you go. That, that, that's the concern, okay. because oh. we, we're not we're looking for the environment here. Okay, and yet we know it's going to be a pain to do the recovery manhole, but unfortunately, from an environmental thing, that's the right thing to do. Okay, and they're willing to do it. I have right out of the plumbing code copy of the suggested method. Okay, yeah. it doesn't have to be. No detailing, no carbons. Okay. Uh, no detailing, no carbons. No, you can do detailing. No. If you do, you, you, how are you going to clean your cars? Where no, you we're not going to clean cars. We're going to repair cars and that's it. We're not going to wash cars, we're not going to detail cars. They'll do it at the other shop. We'll do it at the other shop. I mean, do people wash their cars at their house? Where, do the water there, go where, where does yeah. that water go? Depending, if they depending on the location, a lot of it goes into the street and it's not exactly, good. Exactly, yes, right. Good. I, we, we don't disagree with that, but yeah. your business, you're, you're going to be washing more cars. It's not our primary business. Primary business is selling cars and repairing. Okay. Mr. Where, where will the water go? Well, wherever, if there's the house across the street, they wash the car in their driveway. No, no. Where's that water? No, going? we're not talking about the people across the street. Well, where will your here. water, your drainage from the building go? Now, where does it's it going go? going in now? the gutter right now. In the it, front. It, it goes into the ground. Yeah. Yes. And it's going to go where it is going right now. We're not right. going to do no detailing. We're not going to do no car wash. That's it. What else? No more tower. What color you want? Tell me. We put that color on the building. No colors. We will put no colors. Is anyone aware of the Tim view? Is Tim is Tim. on? I'm going to put. A, I'm going to put a note in the site plan approval on this one. Is that a recovery manhole is required if any detailing is to be done on site? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Yes, John. <clears throat> that's wrong because he's running a repair shop, and I I know in my shop the state came around and closed all manholes off. If you don't have a recovery manhole in a place for that water to go, you certainly are not going to pollute the neighbor's property. You don't have to detail. You can wash cars, you can have oils on a leak out on the yard because they're in a repair business. Where is that stuff going to flow to? That's what the recovery manhole takes care of. And we have done that in the past for all <coughs> places in the aquifer recharge area, but this is a site that doesn't have that and it's a repair garage it's not a house you can't compare it to a household it's a commercial business so therefore your board should require that and done with the engineers spec so then you know it's going to be right Well, you may I change your mind. I certainly no. I I certainly agree. I know when uh, we're uh, going to build a garage, and that was required by I, someone. It was required for even a farm garage. So this is going to be a lot more intense than. So what's the opinion of the board? I. I think it should be required because where's the water going to go? It it should have a trap. It's where's the water going to be coming from? Because it's not going to be washing cars. It I don't think from the rain and spill the oil, whatever's dripped into a manhole. That's why you protect the area. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I'm a professional engineer, and I just wanted to know if there was any consideration for the fact that uh, adjacent and abutting to this property is APR land. Um, no. For agricultural land is agricultural land. APR or otherwise doesn't matter. All right. Yeah. But that's where the water would go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm 
or across the street onto my land. The town has a uh, drainage gutter that goes straight into the brook, mm -hmm. roughly across the street from this. Opinions over here? I would agree with your comment that if they change to washing or detailing, then obviously it's required. Yeah. I think it's too. Yeah. The, the only thing that I made that comment about is it's almost, Im almost impossible to run a garage without washing a vehicle at one time or another. Um, I worked in a garage. You bring a garage in from, the, I mean, you bring a vehicle in from the outside covered in snow. You normally try to wash it because it's weak, to wait for it to melt takes forever. So you'll scrape it off when you want to get it clean, you want to make it look good. You're going to at least rinse it off. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward just saying put the recovery manhole in, period, and that takes care of all the concerns. Because who's going to keep track of them if they're washing and cleaning cars inside? And this way, if it's there, it's done. I don't know how expensive the recovery manhole is, but it's the right, it, it, environmentally, it's the right thing to do. Mr. Chairman, yes. do you need more than just the recovery manhole, just recovers any oils? Yeah, this is all. It, it, yeah, this, it, it, it so needs to be designed with an engineer that the water goes to say an underground so it perks away and it doesn't pollute the neighbor's properties or anybody's property or a stream you know I mean it could Russell Brook is to the west of it this proposed system is right out of the uh, plumbing code it's been run by the plumbing inspector <coughs> It would go into a tank that would be, you know, monitored, you know, and pumped out when it needed to be. Okay. Can any anybody else? This is a tough call from a legal point of view. There is no question about it. This. Is, it's a pre-existing uh, non-conforming use compared to what Mr. Kirschless ran. And we, Lesko's garage is out of the picture because that three year lapsed. So from a legal point of view, we certainly are making a pre-existing non-conforming use a lot more non-conforming. If this were more before the ZBA, they would have a tough time approving it. But in the spirit of compromise, if they were willing to eliminate the tower, put white, as was agreed upon, uh, and raise the, the roof four feet, and, which appears to be necessary to carry out the, the mission of the uh, garage and put the, the, the trap in, uh, I, would, I would then vote in favor of it. So if they put the trap in, then they can do detailing out there and washing cars. That's right. correct. <coughs> okay. I'm, not sure I'm not sure this yes, sir, Mr. Would, <coughs> would satisfy that. What well, sounds like it, that it, trap you put in is, is only going to service the inside of the building. Is that correct? I don't think we've got a with right. That's correct. Uh, then uh, there can be no washing outside the building or washing three. engines or anything else. It has to be done in a I designated know. area. How many bays do you have there? Two? Three. Two. Three. Right. Oh, I'm just um, I'm not sure that this detail would apply if they go ahead and this detail says it requires a plumbing board variance and it's to serve a maximum of two field bays. So there might be another detail that you can come up with. Well, I think Jim, when Jim writes, one. writes only, the, uh, you only have two days. When he oh, writes, there's a third one in the, in the back, I think. Mm -hmm. There's two in that, the front, mm -hmm. or is that not? Th that's, there's not. Um, they were the bottom. 
Were you going to, were you going to, they going to be using the back base, the back door for anything, cleaning? They're not touching any of the construction here. No, nothing in the back. No. That's what it's just terrible. That was, the, that was an old painting day. Yeah, the old painting. Um, that's more of a garage than anything, if I'm correct, because the garage, the roof isn't even being raised in there. Right. It's, I remember painting, when they painted in there, there's not a lot of room to paint. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Lesko used to, Mrs. Lesko did, nine, Mrs. Lesko, not Mr., Mrs. Lesko, remember that, yeah. did 90% of the painting. <laughs> But it killed one of her sons. Yes. Well, yeah. there's a whole story behind that. I'm just saying that she was the painter of the family. Um, always, they always put it to Mr. Lesko, but if you ever saw Mr. Lesko the painter, that was a rare occasion. <coughs> just kind of a funny side story. So, Mark, are you referring to uh, approval by the plumbing inspector or something like that? Because yeah. we do this, have a little caveats in, this is, this in our approval. This, this if yeah. other boards require it, it, this should, this it will be installed. This is, this, uh, the recovery manhole is required, and it shall be properly designed and approved by the plumbing inspector. Okay, perfect. Very simple, without going to a lot of yeah. complications. Mr. Chairman, the plumbing inspector cannot design that. He I didn't say it, I didn't say it, design it. Oh, I thought you did. No, I said properly designed and inspected by the plumbing inspector. Right. Approved, pro pro properly designed and approved by the plumbing inspector, not inspected. Okay, well, you hopefully ultimately would be. Okay, anything else? Mr. Chair, okay, I'll make a motion. Uh, yes, sir. I would suggest that since there have been all sorts of ads and drops on this, that you may be delay a vote until you have a rendering of what will be built. Okay. Is that one, one, one meeting going to cause you much trouble? Yes. It's already been eight we weeks. I don't see this as a, any different than any other project in town. That it, He's telling you he's going to paint it white, no. white is white. Well, we, in we, fact, if it is, what, it is what, what, exactly what, 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 like no other thing in we, town. We, we want a Exact picture on one page. We, we can we can give you a conditional approval tonight. Okay. Come back with the drawing at the next meeting, and you're and then you can go for without. You don't have to do anything but come back with a drawing of what we just talked about tonight. Okay, that sound like a reasonable thing. Yes, sir. Yes. So if you don't come back with, when you come back when you come back with a reasonable drawing, <laughs> everything will move forward. All right. Yes. No vote is going to be required. All right. So they could begin construction as soon as they get conditional approval. Right? So they no, 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 no. There is still no. the appeal period because okay, this right. is a reopening. Well, they could do it subject to their risk. Yes, they could. All right. Well, and it's not going to get recorded with the clerk immediately. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The project satisfies the general purposes of site general purpose of the site plan approved by law, site permit by law. Project is not detrimental to the established the future character of the neighborhood. The uses, intended uses are not prohibited by the bylaw and are permitted thereby. The board determines that work conducted in accordance with the following plans will be in compliance with this section of the site plan approval bylaw. Um, the berm will be installed along the green space on Cummins Road. Exterior building to be white, no power. Recovery manhole is required which shall be properly designed and approved by the plumbing inspector, and any washing, et cetera, shall be, shall not, no washing shall be done outside the building. A copy of the site plan approval have been distributed as provided in the bylaw. Uh, proposal as amended satisfies S site plan approval. Um, see, the carpet is going to be made with that. The planning board placed the following conditions. Design features including not limited to landscaping, specifically including tree, oh, okay, there's no trees here. Um, drainage, exterior, um, shall be integral part of the approved design and any deviation of the plan as presented will require such approval of the planning board. Approval is for the following uses only, exotic auto, repair and sales, correct? We have the number of cars? Yes, yes, that's on the first one. Okay. Yep. Um, sign detail has been provided and approved. Um, landscaping must be installed. There's no landscape. Well, well, that was on the first one. So 
sign detail. Okay, there's no power, so there's no sign. Any outdoor lighting fixture newly installed or replaced shall be shielded so that it's not to provide a strong direct light beyond the property boundaries. If upon completion of the project there is a spillover of light in excess of one foot candle, it shall be corrected so that there will be no more than one foot candle spillover onto surrounding properties. No storage trailer, shipping containers, temporary or permanent shall be allowed on site. Um, we're not required to perform a security. The approval subject to other boards, if and as required, the Hadley Conservation, Hadley Sewer Commission, Hadley Water Commissioners, and any state agencies. Any project changes directed by other boards or agencies must be approved by the planning board. One set of the approved site drawings, site plans will be maintained on site during construction for the zoning enforcement officer. The project will be reviewed for compliance. Uh, You will maintain a minimum sickness depth of topsoil on you all. That one. You don't need that one. Required front side yard setback. Um, no, that one. Shall the site site approval site plan approval shall not become effective until a notice of decision is affixed to the, until a notice of decision is fixed to the original plan. Certifying that the conditions set forth are noted and incorporated into the site plan, and the mylar is signed by the planning board chair or clerk. Copies of the sign, signed original are filed with the planning board, zoning enforcement officer, and town clerk. And that is the motion. Question, please. Yes. You want, you want a mylar of the site plan so that you can have it in your record? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. That, don't worry about it. We'll edit that. Okay. I will. I can send you the PDF yeah. once the decision gets filed. I'll That's the motion. That's the motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstain? Mr. Dwyer abstains. So we have this one. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. How much paperwork do you want, if any? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is, is there a 20 day appeal period? After the submission to the town clerk, w once it's filed with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period. That's yeah. only for the abutters, right? Oh, okay. No. Well, the, the abutters will be the only ones that are notified by mail that has been, that has been filed with the town clerk. <coughs> but, you know, anybody that there's the criteria of, 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 of appeal. I don't think that's true. I think that it has to be an abutter for an appeal. It could be, uh, if it went beyond that, that would have to be some kind of a uh, it has to be someone with uh, a grieved party. A grieved party. Uh, and it's a narrow definition of what your interest is. Not everybody who is quote unquote interested is considered an interested party. Now we have the fire station. I'm going to have to recuse myself because I'm in a fire.
working for somebody is five years. If I'm correct. I don't, I don't know how that. Some years, five years, but I have that I happened to me once to be somebody, and the uh, number came up to be five years. If I remember, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, for the record, I'm Mark Arnold from Design here to uh, present the uh, look at the fire substation. And uh, just to, again, we're running the project from scratch, so I want to give you a complete overview from day one and the beginning of operation is existing conditions plan. This is an existing site on uh, River Drive, North Mean to your right, and Stockbridge Road is this location. Uh, the site generally drains in this direction. It's usually it's uh, currently farm fields. There's a small area and a hill. This little portion here drains in this direction. Um, and I think uh, most people are familiar with the site. Some of the other aspects of it, there are some wetlands along the uh, western portion of the property. There's also a perennial stream at that location. Um, we, not to jump ahead of the game, but this graphic essentially shows some of the uh, resource areas and the uh, limitations associated with it. Uh, we'll get into detail of the placement of the proposed fire station, uh, but right now I want to show this is the existing property location here. Um, this line here is the 100 foot buffer zone from the wetlands, and this is the approximate 200 foot riparian zone from the uh, riverfront area. So basically, this is uh, not restricted, but you know, regulated area, which typically we try to stay out of. The actual wetlands, we only flagged this particular location because it was on property. We had the rest of the wetlands approximated because it is off property. <coughs> uh, had a confirmation from the um, Conservation Commission through a request for termination, and they concur with the general delineation of resource areas. So where is your property line here? The property line is a light dashed area here. Oh, the white, okay. Okay. Right. And then this, this again, uh, we'll get into detail to the actual fire station, but this heavy black line is essentially the uh, mostly developable area of the remaining portion of the site, we're respecting the fit to front, put front set back and the side yard setbacks, and then staying, trying to stay out of the uh, resource area, regulated area, the resource areas. Just, just for reference, uh, on the property. At the, down the west, that brook there, Russell Brook, is completely out of its banks right now. The meadow is essentially flooded, so that's what happens in flood season. Not always, but many yeah. times. It's a perennial uh, oh. stream, without question. So, yeah. so it is a you know uh, we're out, out of the uh, on your floodplain on our property, but I don't doubt that it encroaches upon the area. Um, the site is uh, accessible for uh, stormwater. I mean, for domestic water, so we have water supply here, and also there's a sewer system that we can tie in here at this location. So the site has sewer and water ability to, to go there. Um, get into the proposal uh, for the station. I guess it's easier probably to look at this plan rather than go into some of the other detailed plans. I guess I'll jump to here. Um, the proposed plan is to uh, construct a 7,000 square foot fire station. I'll let the architect go into the details of the actual building, what the building looks like. Um, and some of the reasons we located at this location, the stormwater discharge point is towards the south. The sewer discharge point is towards the south. We essentially pushed the building as far north as it was reasonable to allow the building to still access the sewer through gravity without providing a pump station. We uh, also wanted to respect the neighbor to the north, so we didn't go, couldn't go any farther north in that respect as well. Um, another crucial aspect of choosing this location for the building is it's going to be serviced primarily by passenger vehicles to access the building. And so there's a large number of vehicles going to be using this driveway, which is preferable to uh, uh, put it opposite of a street intersection rather than skewed somewhere. Um, the emergency vehicle access is, is separated. Anytime we do in a public safety perspective, we always want to make sure we separate the public access and the emergency access, so there's always need to be two separate locations. So we do have this, the higher use ac access is here, the lower uh, use uh, access, or I mean separated access for emergency vehicles here. There is provisions for the emergency vehicles if they want to come back to 
and come in and actually back into the station of this location. Um, I'm going to jump around just a little bit here to discuss um, why we also chose this location for the driveways and access to the building. We were concerned about uh, site distances. Um, placing the building at this location with the public access opposite Stockbridge Road and emergency vehicles here. At this location, we have a very good site distance going this location. If we had reversed the building and kept the uh, public access here and put the uh, emergency access separated, we were closer to a curve and the site distance would be much worse. So this took advantage of having the access located at the high use location and then the uh, emergency access separated and still with a good site distance and we pushed the building as far as we could to the north to remain access to the rest of the parcels. Uh, this location for this high use entrance as well would in the future if there's some new development plans for the remainder of the parcel would allow this same high use access to access the rest of the site without creating the third access at, the, at a high use location which should be at the intersection location. Um, we're going sort of fast here. We're talking about site distance. Um, I'm going to go more quickly on the site to the different aspects of the site and the building location layout. Again, the emergency access would be at this location. I'd say emergency access for the emergency vehicles coming in and out. Um, and they would be able to access one to come in here with their emergency lights on so they can control the intersection very easily with their emergency flashes. This is essentially a standard key intersection which people are used to accommodating. Um, we do have a adequate parking for staff as well as the public. There is a drive-through access in the back of the building too. And the pavement has, you can see, been wide enough to accommodate uh, the vehicles <coughs> to enter that location. We've also done turning analysis to make sure fire trucks can make this analysis and make this turn safely. Um, the building, again, when we get into the architectural, is designed to accommodate the fire trucks and the office work here. And we made provisions for a future bay expansion if the town needs that in the future. The lighting, we have a minimal lighting on the project. Uh, there was a lighting plan included with the submission, which shows us no spillover of lighting on the site. Complied with all the state, the town standards for lighting. Um, we do have a sign, fire station sign here, which is in conformance. There's a, there's a copy of the sign in the application. I think complies with the town requirements. The only other aspect of the sign is we do have a, a, a flagpole. I don't know if that really comes under jurisdiction of the planning board or not, but we like to show here for the board if we can. Um, I think that's freedom of uh, something or other to yeah, a flagpole. <laughs> Uh, we do have uh, minimal landscaping, but it does comply with town requirements with the number of trees that we have provided. We also uh, want to provide some type of screening to the neighbor to the north. We respect that aspect. Uh, the property line is here. We have right currently now shown uh, a row of screening arborvitae. It's approximately 30 feet in from the property line. So we could put them on a property line. We brought them back 30 feet. We we're willing to compromise that more if the board so desires or if the neighbor really has a, a strong desire to do that. But we already are uh, respecting a 30 foot buffer back from the property line to install this. We would like to reserve this area for use by the fire department for whatever function they would like to do <coughs> in the future. I'm not sure what that would be, so we can't blend that aspect of it. Um, there was a concern about noises from the fire station. We did have a sound analysis done on the project, which essentially uh, determined the decibel levels primarily to the north, which is most receptive neighbor. We did do that analysis. We determined that the decibel level at the property line would be about 35 decibels. I'm not a sound expert, but no, 35 is not a very high sound elevation. So the most receptive neighbor, based upon the HVAC equipment that we have, is going to be 35. I assume when the sirens go, they will be louder than that. Yeah, but the everyday so operations, be different. <laughs> yeah, the uh, operations of the uh, site will be. And the generator, uh, did we talk about that? Or didn't you talk about it? The, the generator and the, uh, is about the same uh, decibel rating, sound pressure rating, as the uh, condensers are. And when you put them together, you, in, you 
increase the overall decibel level by about three or four points. You can use that for your calculations. So assuming those calculations are based upon both condensers and generator going at the same time. Um, you know, we're running through here fast, but I think I'm covering all the points that need to be covered and addressed. Uh, probably would like to address the drainage next. I'll probably use this one uh, first of all. Um, we did some extensive drainage uh, soil analysis on the site. We dug multiple test pits out on the site to determine what the soil conditions were. Ground level was, uh, groundwater was determined greater than nine feet throughout the site. Um, we determined what would be appropriate for stormwater management based upon the actual soils. We did a textual analysis of soils. We also did what we call an infiltrometer test. Old days used to do perk tests for septic systems, but for drainage, that's not acceptable. We did an infiltrometer test and at several locations, and we took the worst case scenario that we found uh, for the design of the stormwater system, and we actually halved that again. So we're, uh, the, the, we had seven inches per hour for one rate, three inches per hour for the next rate, so we take the worst case scenario, three inches per hour as far as an infiltration rate. We use a design factor of one and a half, so we're trying to be extremely, extremely conservative in our stormwater design. Um, we actually have two stormwater systems, uh, which is really unique for a presentation that I have to board. We usually present something and have you come back with it. But um, our original concept was to take the existing site, essentially the drainage mostly, again, flows in this general direction. We would collect the water from the paved areas, sheet flow it across the grass and, and a lawn area into a shallow detention basin. Uh, the deepest uh, the basin would be was about nine inches deep. Um, and it would, it would uh, attenuate the flows from this entire site to be below existing uh, flow elevations for the two, 10 and 100 year storms. So after the site is developed, the one-off rate leaving the site will be less than it is in current conditions. Um, <coughs> We also have a, a very small depression in this location, uh, just a fully complete, uh, complete picture because um, we wanted to trap just a little bit of water there to comply in strict, strict conformance to the state stormwater guidelines and handbook. Um, the reason we have that area is to quantify recharge volumes for any development. You have to have a certain amount of uh, surface area that you have impervious you have to provide a certain amount of recharge per year. Uh, it's a minor area. It doesn't really affect the stormwater calculations. As a matter of fact, we ignored it in our stormwater calculations. We only utilized it to fully satisfy the state um, stormwater criteria and guidelines. Um, so I don't think that really, again, we usually didn't want to straight under strict uh, jurisdiction of the DEP or Conservation Commission, but I just want to make sure we weren't uh, ignoring anything. The, uh, Infiltration basin here, when it does overflow, we have an overflow pipe, so this is just spread out everywhere. It's connected to an existing closed system. Again, this water continually, uh, existing Y flows down and enters these catch basins, so the amount of water entering this location remains the same. We had to excavate the material out of the catch basin to confirm the inverts to make sure that the system would work. Again, we've decided the building far enough that way that we can take the sanitary flows from the building and also connect it to the uh, stormwater, I mean the sanitary system without a pump. If we go any further to the north, the grade becomes such that we'd have to add a pump. So we are at the furthest north location that makes sense for this particular site. Um, I do, again, I'm rambling here very quick, but I think I'm trying to cover. Mr. Chairman, can I address yes. the yeah. issue? Uh, well, we're talking about drainage. I'm uh, the abutter directly to the south, and I've already contacted the planning board about an existing drainage problem that I have that is caused by that particular uh, parcel, and I just want to make sure that I receive some type of assurances from the planning board in your design that this placement and this entire lot of drainage plan that you have proposed would not exacerbate the problem that I already have. Make, make a bad situation even worse. That's, that's, as a civil engineer, drainage engineer, that's my number one criteria. And the process we go through in the design 
as we look at the existing site, try to uh, establish what the existing drainage characteristics are, how much water is leaving the site, what rate it leaves the site, and that's our bar that we have to uh, abide by. So that's our first step, figuring out what's going on. We design whatever the project is, and we make sure the drainage system that we design brings that runoff back to at least as good as it was, and hopefully a little bit better than what it was. And what we are, we're actually showing a slight decrease, not a huge decrease, but a slight decrease in the uh, um, runoff relieving the site. We're not saying we're going to alleviate your problem, but we're definitely saying we're not going to make it any worse than it's just. Okay, and can you show me on the other sketch there with the green, like exactly where is the area yeah. in which the drainage would be affected to cover the uh, surface area on the car side? I don't know if I'm making it it's myself clear. Yeah. The, the, the drainage system that we're proposing right. it covers yeah. what area there? If you could just show me with your finger kind of outline. How, how much area is draining towards this? Yes. Like the drainage system that is being proposed. The, the drainage system, system that, well, again, we have two yeah, drainage systems. It's obviously not going to cover a whole lot, but which. He's asking for the size of the basin. Where is the basin? Show him where the swales are. The drainage basin that drains towards here. No, the basin you're. you're no, the basin we're going to build. Okay. There, there's, again, we, we have sort of two basins. One is this basin right here. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be a maximum of nine inches deep. When it gets over nine inches deep, there's a pipe that runs out. The intent of this basin is that he's, 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 he's so asking where the reach your is. drainage basin. The drainage the area. The reach. Yeah. The area that you're draining into the basin go, is coming, is about, is what area? It's your approximately the building the parking lot. this area here. Well, what's going into here is approximately this location. That's what he's asking. Yeah, what, yes. what, what, what area is going into your, your, your large your detention basin? Correct. With your finger. I don't know if you can appreciate this or not, but this is sort of the same same plan here. The green area that you see here, this is the building. This green area here is going into this basin. So it's basically this area here is going into that basin. Okay, so it's a greater reach than what the parking area is in the station itself. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. So it's this area going around. This it's it ground gets flowing here. There's a little swale. So this area, basically here, is going to open the flow into this basin, okay. this detention basin. <coughs> um, the detention basin again, maximum of about nine inches deep, based upon the infiltration rate. Or we're choosing a half inch per hour, which I think is probably around seven. Uh, even after a storm, it's going to drain in about six hours after the storm stops. DEP guidelines say it has to drain within 72 hours. So we're very confident that it's going to function as designed. Uh, we're being very conservative in our design like criteria. Um, again, one area, this was an earlier version. I'm using this primarily for a uh, presentation for how it works. To get into the actual site itself, we are a little bit different. The only difference is primarily is we have a drive coming around on this one here. This is a little bit different. This is the latest version which we have which accommodates the truck fire trucks. The uh, simply added this little driveway here. That's the biggest difference between the previous education. Mr. Bischoff, you had a question. Yeah. I've seen Paul's yard flood over. That's all shear runoff. So all building, all par parking will increase his water, not decrease it because it can park. And why they put underground storage at the library and senior center was to eliminate that stuff. And the last selectman's meeting, the chairman is concerned about climate change, runoffs, and, and water flooding. Underground would be the best thing on this site because it would perk all year round. When it freezes, that water is not going to perk. All of it is going to, if there's a, a major a rainstorm in frozen weather, it's going to run down. And that overflow, the pipes down, they didn't inspect it. The DPW didn't inspect it. Nobody inspected it. It's just a big 
question mark because they could have sent the camera down there. They never did. That land, that line, <coughs> according to Mike Kamoski and Dennis Pip, is probably rotten like the rest of the lines. Now you do have an underground drain system right. design. Uh, I just want to reiterate. No, right. they're, they're concerned about surface rainwater. Uh, we're following the state guidelines. DEP recommends these systems are designed in total compliance with the state guidelines. And people often tell me, "Well, that's frozen. Is the water's going to run off?" Well, if that's frozen, the rest of the site is frozen, and you have 100 percent runoff. So, you know, these things have been proven to be effective. We did look at an alternative system. Um, the alternative system would be to uh, put an underground infiltration system in this location. And the uh, aspect of doing that on the sur surface criteria, we essentially sheet flow the water, have it go across the grass, sort of clean it up before it gets there, and sits in the pond and infiltrates. When we have a subsurface we have to a different process, we essentially have to install catch basins, which are good, um, and collect the water in the catch basins and pipe it to this location. And now the fact that we're piping it directly to a situation where we're injecting into the ground, we need to make sure the water is clean before we do that. And before we take it into the uh, system, we have to put it through a stormwater treatment chamber, a hydrodynamic separator which separates the uh, silt and sand, and also can trap oils if they happen to be there. So that's an additional scenario. Um, and then this does the same type of scenario, holds the water, gives an opportunity to infiltrate in the ground, and then what doesn't able to infiltrate in the ground, again, is connected to the um, stormwater system in the roadway. How deep is the underground system? Um, you would ask that question. Um, the invert of the uh, system is one, I'll call it 150, and the top is around 154, so it's about four feet down to the bottom of the system. Okay. What's, What's the water table? Water table in this location, table, this location we, we uh, did exploratory fits, and we did not find any down at nine feet. So we're, we're well above the water That's table in this location. Right. Just, just for Mark, you know, you were at the last meeting, but the question at the last meeting was, you know, which one is the planning board more in favor of? and um, they were the architect. Well, they actually they, they were they were sent back to come back with a report on two things for tonight: um, the underground system and the grease trap. We'll get to those, so I'll leave those out right now. Just keep keep, keep going. going. Before, so, keep going uh, you part are. of the process that we do uh, again, we are part of the drainage scenario is we are requesting one waiver regarding the um, drainage. Um, it's the not for the runoff and the rate of flooding, et cetera. It's for uh, the cleaning of the pavement, TSS removal primarily. And essentially, criteria says any dirty area, essentially you have to clean it up before you discharge it from your site. And we are doing that everywhere except for the driveway here, which goes from the fire station straight up to the road. There's really no feasible way to collect it. So it doesn't affect the stormwater runoff. It's just that one minor thing of that's one small area of the site that we're not totally meeting the total suspended solids removal criteria. So that's a one waiver that we're requesting. Yeah, that, that was noted in your reports. And I want to add, uh, there's another waiver which is not related to uh, drainage, but I want to, we're talking about waivers, sure. I want to make sure that you knew about it, which was the, for the traffic report for the Oh, yeah, station. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just want to make it clear. Okay. Um, again, part of the uh, green scenario is we do have the uh, updated drainage report, which includes both drainage scenarios and also um, the calculations. I don't know if you have a copy of the revised drainage or not. I don't think so. But uh, we had a full drainage report, which we'll give to you tonight. Uh, included with that is, based on previous meeting, we do have operation maintenance uh, criteria for both systems because we are in a unique system. We're not sure what we're going to have. So I don't know how the board's going to address that issue. We're proposing to have the surface, sub, the surface detention system as the uh, primary base bid, and if the bids come in appropriately and there's money left over, then the uh, alternate would be to put in the underground system, which is more expensive. But um, the getting back to the O and M, the operation maintenance for the primarily for the detention system is a moment twice a year to make sure it's all right. If it happens to get in problem, you can scarify it and re and uh, reestablish re the infiltration capacity of the system. The closed drainage system, you have to pump out the catch basins, you have to clean out the um, 
bone water treatment chamber, monitor the uh, subsurface system to make sure there's no sediment in there, and if there is sediment or standing water at that point in time, you need to call in a professional to come and make a determination of the remediation, which oftentimes means removing and replacing the system because there's really no way to get underneath there and uh, address the system if or within it does get clogged. Um, I think that's a very quick summary. I think I tried to cover. I was going to add one little detail is that both systems have been reviewed by a peer reviewer. Uh, have they gave us some comments? We went right. back to the comments and everything seemed. Uh, he gave us the thumbs up on the both systems. Okay, now I don't want to uh, turn the stage over, but I do have an architect who knows a lot more about buildings than I do. So. Should we ask the questions about the drainage now? No. Let's hold off on that. Yeah. But let him go for the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Two sheets in. So it's, uh, well, actually, start with the second floor. So as Mark described, uh, we have a, a fire substation. The uh, area of the building is actually uh, 5,380 5, square feet. Um, So um, the building is 5,184 square feet. Uh, a little over 3,000 square feet of it is in the apparatus area. A little over 2,000 square feet of it is in the office area. There is a small mechanical uh, platform which does not contribute to the area. Um, the building is uh, wood framed, uh, cement board siding, uh, various types of siding from uh, shake to clapboard to a vertical panel. Um, uh, sort of like a batten panel. Uh, roofing system is a standing seam metal roof. It's done in a fairly traditional style. Um, the other elevations of the built, we have some storefront doors. Why is it not vinyl siding? Why is it not vinyl? Yeah, why we put it why we put it up another building that requires maintenance? The intent and desire of the committee uh, was to have a building that was more um, characteristic of the uh, traditional municipal colonial style. Uh, the uh, vinyl is nice, but it doesn't come in uh, as many of these uh, styles as we would need, particularly in, in, in the vertical. Uh, the cement board siding is a long, will hold on to paint much longer, as we all know, than t standard wood. So it's still going to be painted. It's still one, one day it will need to be painted. That's I mean, true. whether it's 20 years or whether it's 10 years or 20 mm -hmm. years, it's going to need painting. And that building is going to cost a mm -hmm. fortune to paint. Well, what about the new station one? It's got a big windstorm and it rips the vinyl siding off the side of the building, Jim. If you put the right siding, if you put the right siding on, it won't get ripped off. And if it's put on right. Just if it's it put on off. properly and it's the proper oh, siding, it won't get ripped off. It'll take a hurricane to rip it off, a big hurricane. Yeah. Yes. This product is also a non-combustible material, so vinyl siding is not a non-combustible material, so this is a cement board, and also you're talking about a public safety complex, That's right. so something that you want to be hardy, normally you're seeing brick or, or block, but that's that's a, another reason why we did it, and that's not. Uh, Lonum gutters and downspouts, there is a uh, cupola structure uh, with some uh, lighting. There is lighting on the building, and as mentioned, there's lighting on the uh, on the grounds and poles, uh, there is going to be one sort of decorative uh, red globe light, you know, say fire on it, basically, sort of a typology there. Um, and the lighting's all shielded? Uh, yeah, it all has cutoffs and uh, zero crossing the property line. I mean, we're pretty far off the property line with any of that. Um, side, ele side elevations, uh, aluminum or vinyl clad uh, wood windows, double hung in most cases, some fixed. Um, again, st we, we stepped the roof, cut, try to bring the volume of the, of the overall building down. This is the office area. On the other side, you have a little bit higher where, where the uh, 
apparatus area is. Uh, there is a front porch and a, a covered entrance over the front and in the back more serviceable. You know, you got utilities back here, you got the one pass through um, overhead door. And I swear that was a nice there. Like four we don't really we don't need the floor plan. Okay. And you can we're, we're, the floor you plan is the other east show if you want in this right yeah. Yeah, that, that, the, the floor plan is a building inspector problem. Sure. We're just concerned with the exterior and that kind of stuff. Okay. The footprint. Um, you've seen the uh, you've seen this you've seen this before in the uh, the previous right. studies. So uh, basically looking at worm graves and Gray sidings and then a red roof and some red siding. One of each here. And that's the short story. Okay. Mr. Bukowski. <clears throat> I agree with you, Mr. Chairman, about the vinyl siding. This town has a poor record of maintaining their wooden structures and their paintable outside. Just look at our buildings all around. Look at this building. Now we're going to have another one? Yeah. Well, I made my comments on about the senior center, about this, and you know we, we cannot regulate materials of construction. Just an editorial comment about the building right. that it's... Uh, that's it. Okay. Okay. Back to drainage. You had some questions, Joe. Well, so you're given the choice to us whether we want the infiltration system or the uh, detention pond. I guess. Is, um, is that what you're alluding to? Yeah, I guess. Or you're saying you're telling us it's going to be this one or this one? <laughs> That's, I guess, sort of a, a dilemma that we are in, and I, I'm trying to help it work with the board trying to figure out the solution. The reason the meeting was continued was yeah. because when you hold the meet, the members at the last meeting, you and Mr. Dwyer were okay with the above ground system. Mr. Michkowski was adamant about the underground system and the grease trap. They agreed to go back and look at them. Once Mr. Michkowski voiced his concern about the underground system, I never made my opinion known. I was undecided. I'm still undecided. So I, got, I, I have some questions for you. Okay. Nine months of the year, eight and a half months of the year, the above ground system, any system over there is going to work like a charm. Absolutely. That ground is going to soak in the dirt, the water, you're going to need a monsoon to flood. So I'm going to address the winter conditions. How's the snow going to be plowed? What's the proposal? Where is the snow going to be put? Um, I don't think we've come up with an actual... There's no curbs, plan. There's no curbs in the back, so the uh, right. person plowing the snow has opportunities to do whatever's efficient for him or if there's a particular requirement of the board. We're not experts. I'm mm -hmm. asking a yes. question because this is all part of. I'm not. I'm speaking from not. I'm not shooting from the hip. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask logical questions. Sure. Those answers are going to determine what my vote is. Yeah. Okay. I think the the uh, you know ideal situation we we uh, probably should designate it more. This is the location of both systems, um, and ideally the the snow will be plowed back to the back. So. It would stay out of the way. I mean, it, it, if it's the above ground system, it should not be plowed in this location because it would prevent the water from uh, flowing this way, going in the direction it's supposed to go. So, if the snow would put it out of the way, it would have an opportunity to melt slowly and then drain back the way it went, okay. and it would not hinder the ability of the site. That, to that get was what I would uh, guess as well. Now, approximately given the size of the two systems, how much water? We're talking frozen winter conditions. No, no snow on the ground. The pond, the detention basin is now frozen. Water is not going to soak in. How much rain must fall to fill the detention basin uh, up to the nine-inch level? Roughly. How much rain? 
How many inches of rain must fall to fill the detention basin to the nine inch level, assuming that the ground is frozen and can't infiltrate? I have to make a look in my calculations. Uh, I have other plans come up with this? What's that? Have other plans come up with the, the question that you asked? About how are you going to predict how many Most of the time we tell them this is what we want. And we have told we multiple have other review. developers we want an underground system. And they put it in. Okay? The town is in a different situation here. They're complaining about it's going to cost more money. I'm asking logical questions to come up with a logical answer. Otherwise, we're just going to tell you to put the underground system in. And I don't think you want that. I want to make logical, sound reasons that it is okay or the above ground system is okay. Okay? Well, unfortunately, what I have in front of me is. Well, you're looking, Mark. I have a question to answer. Let, let, let him answer the question. Don't I have the, the, don't, don't I have the, the 100 year storm calculations in front of me, which are seven and a half inches. At that point in time, we are filling up the basin, obviously, and utilizing the overflow. So I don't have the answer for you. How, how big, how many square feet is your basin? How many square feet? Yes. Uh, 7,319. Okay, so you have. Well, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the cumulative storage. That's how many cubic feet will hold. The uh, um, What's surface the area is almost 25,000 square feet. Okay, so you have roughly a one-to-one -one surface area between the, the, the pavement and the building and everything else, ballpark. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, you probably have a little more storage basin than, than, you, do, um, than you do impervious. Yeah, I think we want to look at the house. Oh, yes. This yeah. is the only one that I, well, the rest have to well, I do have it on the construction uh, line as well. Yeah. This is the size of the basin here. And this is obviously the paved area. So I won't say it's a two to one. I mean, one to one is probably a one half to one. Okay. A, wait, 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 wait. You're, you're talking that, this base, is, this that is basin is 25,000 square feet? Oh. No. No. No possible no, way. No, I'm sorry. It's uh, three uh, 3,600 All right, that yeah. makes more sense yeah. Yeah. <laughs> compared yeah. to the size of the drawing. Okay, Sorry. so yes. roughly we About have, 4, square feet. so we have roughly uh, five times, we have 15,000 square feet of impervious ballpark. Correct. And we have 3,000 square feet of basin. So therefore, three inches of rain will fill up that basin to the top. Uh, assuming it doesn't infiltrate. Right, right. Assuming frozen and ground. I'm assuming frozen ground, winter conditions, January, February, March, or December, January, February. Yeah. For a fact, I have a computerized rain com win, uh, weather system at my house. In January and February of this year, we got just short of six inches of rain. So it is very conceivable that system could get filled up with water during the winter and require the overflow into the town system. Let, let me, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. I also also like to go back. Let's look at existing conditions. Go back to our existing conditions plan. The entire site is frozen. You get right. six inches of rain, how much rain is going to fall off? That's right. It, 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 I agree. And we're trying to correct the system. We're trying not to flood. However, it's flowing across and it's ending up with snow and everything else on the ground, it's a little bit different than what we have right here. Now, we have 10 inches of rain, 10 inches of snow, I'm sorry, 10 inches of snow, eight, eight to 10 inches of snow falls on the ground. You now have a dam between the impervious area that's 10 inches high of snow and your detention basin. So the water that falls on that parcel is all going to go to River Drive over the blacktop, correct? If there's an ice dam here, yes. I'm talking about a snow dam, yes. Yeah. And when the snow comes in, it's going to freeze. <coughs> and in winter conditions, frozen ground, frozen snow, you're going to have an 8 to 10 inch ice dam, and any rain is going to flow into River Drive and flood River Drive. Yes? I'm, 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 I can't, I don't know the police say no. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 again, I'm coming from a, from a simple, common sense, logical point of view. So where we are, we are requiring this drainage system in River Drive to be working properly. Correct. 
we know for a fact down the road a bunch of pipes were rusted away and it had to be replaced a short period of time ago. We don't know the conditions of the drainage pipes from that catch basin away. If there was an underground system, regardless of the first frozen surface conditions and how much snow, if the parking lot has been plowed, the water is going to go into the infiltration basin. So I'm going to propose one of two choices. You camera the drainage system, like Mr. Michkowski says, to verify, or the town carom cameras the drainage system, to verify that the drainage system will work. The, the downside of that, if they find that it's damaged, now they're going to spend a whole lot of money repairing it. I'm not trying to kick the can down a road here. If it's an underground system, it's going to work irregardless of what is in River Drive for a drainage system. That's my logical point here. That's where I'm coming from, to, to, to say one system or the other. Mark, both systems are tied into the town. So However, work. if you have an underground system that's four feet down to the bottom, yeah. during the winter, you're going to require, it's, it, you're not going to ever have to use the drainage system in the winter. Are you, are you getting, I want to clarify. These systems are designed to attenuate and make it look like the previous. This doesn't stop the drainage from going into the river. It makes it go at the same rate that it's going today or a little better. But if, you, but if your drainage, underground drainage system is four feet down with a stone bed and your groundwater is nine feet down, that water is going to infiltrate 12 months of the year. Is that a correct That's statement? Correct. That's a correct statement. And you're going to require a horrendous rainstorm for the underground system to drain into River Drive. I'm not saying it's not. No, that's, that's not correct. That's not correct? Uh, I, we could design it that way, but we would be over designing it. If we could design it, it we'll call a giant dry well, where all the water goes in and we infiltrate every single drop of water except an emergency. But that causes us to have a much mar larger system than what we need to do. We, our goal is to mimic the existing conditions. We are, know there's a certain amount of water leaving the site today, and we design our system to the size that the same amount leaves. We can design it huge so there's no water, but then we're putting a bigger system in than what we need. So that's our criteria that we try to meet. So to say that the underground system is not going to discharge any water because it infiltrates everything except it's a huge hundred year storm is incorrect. It's designed to recharge and hold back, infiltrate some of the water, but release the water at the same rate that it was in the existing conditions. And that's done by the height of the invert out? Right. It's, it's a dynamic system. You put the water, essentially it's an underground tank with a perforated bottom. So the water comes in and as it fills up, some of the water is going out the bottom, but we size it so that we don't have to put any bigger. As it gets to a certain elevation, it's going to start coming out. So as Jim says, you still have a bathtub there. It's just not quite as... Right. We don't make the bathtub bigger than we have to. Okay. So there is water discharge in there. It's not a misconceiving that there's no water leaving there. We still have our pipe leaving our underground system and going to the, stop, the town system. Okay. okay, so the underground system, how many square feet is the underground system? Um, I don't have that. Just, just scale it off of the drawing there. Yeah. Roughly. Um, it looks similar to the switch. 40 so by 60. So just a, just a smidge smaller than your, than, yeah. than your 60 by 40, I would so say. So 24 on 2,500 right. square feet. So essentially it's the same. We're using the surface area to recharge the water. On the surface one, we're letting the set water sit on top and go into the ground. On the underground one, we're letting it you know, sit on top of the stone and go into the ground. So since they're doing exactly the same thing, one's above ground, one's below ground, the below ground one's much more expensive and, and detailed. It, it also holds a whole lot more water. No, because this is only 40% voids. I mean, you got what's well, full of stone, oh. so the only water that it holds is the air okay. space between okay. the stones. And we do have some uh, infiltration chambers, but most of the water is held in the voids of the stone. So it's, even though it's a larger area, maybe higher, it's only usually about 40% of that volume can be seen for storage, okay. whereas the surface water 
is 100% storage. Okay. Does it okay. matter how deep the frost goes down? I mean, if it's you get anything into frost, the, the tank's going to be below, below that, isn't it? Well, you're, you're going to fill it to the 9-inch level. Yeah. So you're going to be filling, but if it's 40%, so they're, they're, they're calculated approximately e equal water storage, whether it's in the underground system or the above ground system. There are different configurations, but essentially the same okay. math, it's okay. just a different no dynamic configuration. Okay. Mr. Michkowski. There's one big difference. That underground storage is like they said over here. It's going to perk, and that's a high perk area. The soil are good for a high perk. So, it's if you had clay or something there, that the water couldn't go down, then you you would probably have a serious problem there. And again, they have never camered or inspected the line they're dumping into. That's the clincher. Mr. Chair, for what it's worth, the senior center project would have designed an above ground system if they had the space for it. And that's a very typical stormwater drainage system. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They didn't have enough room. It, it, it is room for it. They had to have to go underground. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, so that's, that's why, why the senior center project did that right after the bat and didn't even entertain an above, above ground system because there was no green space for it. Yeah, ten years ago, surface detention basins <clears throat> were what you did, and then when space became limited, they came they came up oh, with the, the concept the, the, of the, I put on a parking lot the, and, the, and the, the, the under underground there. storage systems like those are absolutely. Aesthetically pleasing and everything else because everything is underground and when they're properly designed they're, ex I'm, they're extremely low maintenance. I have no comment in the design. They're both of them designed well and I... Have we had a peer review on this? Yes. 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 Both systems are okay. Okay. But maintenance yep. will be more with the underground system. Absolutely. So what happens if the underground system goes south? We deal what? The underground system goes south. The cleaning to work. The town How much money is it. that going to cost us? I mean, the town has to fix either one if it doesn't work. Yeah, but the, we're talking dollars and cents. Absolutely. Well, how much? How much is it going to cost versus depending versus wrong the with one it. that uh, by a lot calls for? If you're depending what's wrong with it. I can't give you. Nobody can give you that answer. Yeah. If, if it's the, those systems, you've got to have a main maintenance yeah, thing. Not they've got to be maintained. If they're maintained they properly, they work. And how do you maintain them? Educate me on that. You'd have to have the, the, the gentleman that put them in, the designer. I can't give you all those answers. Yeah. The, the, uh, the surface detention basin, it's just essentially a shallow bowl, and you let the water go in, and if it percolates down, you make sure it's mowed and clean of debris. And if it does accumulate debris, you have to clean it out. And if it seems to not, percolate anymore, you can come by, scarify the top eight or ten inches of the soil, get down to the, you know, still clean layer, and let it re-infiltrate, and that's essentially the, the maintenance is mowing it twice a year, the remediation if it starts to fail, is scarify the top, and get rid of whatever's clogging the system. Is there any benefit from making the surface system larger? I mean, once you've excavated it. Um, yeah, I mean, excavation, uh, as far as a cost factor, we make it to the size to match our numbers. I mean, that, that's, we don't make things, we make them for the level of safety, a factor of safety, but we don't make them twice as well, big. I'm as just saying that in here with the, the real question being what, what happens if the surface isn't holding it anymore? Uh, if the surface system were somewhat larger, could it? Could accommodate more, absolutely. Yeah. What are you trying to make, another lake one or two? So from the from the point of view of helping me make a decision, sometimes peer review does help us make that decision. So they approved both yes. concepts. They did. Again. Okay, so both concepts approved. Our highway uh, superintendent or DPW recommends the the infiltration system. And uh, his, so his employers, on the other hand, Seem to well, they they hired expert. The employers can I, can I make well, a no, are making a decision on. They're making other a policy than, decision. Uh, they're making policy decision. Well, that's their job. We're we're not talking policy decision. We have to make a uh, decision on what's going to work effectively. And one of the things, obviously, that 
we always guard against from a planning board perspective is not to hook into an existing drainage system. And this is the big question mark. Is that system, when it overflows into the town drainage system, will, will it work? Yeah, again, uh, I always have to hang my hat on something too to make myself feel comfortable. I'm, I'm not the inventor of everything. Um, what I have to rely on is experts and history. Um, again, Mass the state of Massachusetts developed a stormwater handbook guide. Yeah. And they said, when you do anything that involves the DEP, you have to follow these design guidelines. And these are the approved systems that DEP approved. There's other systems that I would approve, but they say you have to use these, and these are ones they, they have, have case history that works well. And our design completely follows both the design intent and exact language of law of those systems. And both those systems are in full compliance with the state manual stormwater design guidelines. Yeah, one, one more question. How deep is the basin? You were talking about the nine inches, and I was kind of focused on the nine inches. That's nine inches of water in the basin. Correct. How, how deep is the basin? Um, So when we say nine inches, that's nine inches to the invert? You go right. Right. To the invert, and that's right. what is supposed to overflow. Right. But, if but you're trying to find out, right. Yeah. Well, I, want, I want to give you the correct answer rather than my guest answer here. Yeah, it can be nine inches, it's got to be more than that. This elevation here is 152, and that's 151, that's 150.75. So the bottom of the basin is 150.75, and if you come out about five or six feet away, it's uh, a foot higher. So I mean, it's a gra very gradual slope coming down. But the, the, the maximum depth that we'll get to is about nine inches from the bottom of the pond to the pipes. And then it would overflow at 150, 152. So the bottom pond is 150.75. If the pipe failed and everything else failed, it would overflow at 152. Joyce? It's just, I just wanted to make a point that uh, we, the select board, did vote to make this a first al alternate, the underground. We, we know that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to make that point that we did go with yeah. this. The bids came in under the senior center and whatnot. Well, two feet. So. Yeah. It depends on where you're standing. You know, yeah. If you're up here, it's three feet down, four feet down. But if you walk from here to here, it's a, a foot and a half or two feet. Down. Okay. So uh, I'll tell you what, I'm not as worried about it. If this were a situation where we had a private developer, well, first of all, they wouldn't be allowed to connect into the system. But in this case, we have a municipal developer. It is their system. If, if they want to connect municipal building to the municipal system, there is no burden on the taxpayer that we are imposing. We, uh, if they choose, they're choosing to allow it to enter into their system. That that's that's the select board telling us that, in their opinion, the system is adequate for the town's needs, and they will bear the costs of dealing with it. Now, we can't make Walmart or the next auto parts store pay the costs of mitigating the system damage. But in this case, the developer is the town. And if they are going to flood downstream, uh, well, they, they own it already. Uh, that the town is going to pay for it. The town's going to pay for it. Um, one way or the other. And then we're, we're, I'm looking at minimizing that or trying to avoid hoops down a road. But I don't think we have to worry about that. I well, think that in this case, it's on the select board and on their designees. You know, they're basically, they're, they've waived, they've allowed them to tie in in the first place. And everything that goes with it. And if they did that on the basis of the advice they have received, but, but it's their not, call. But they're not doing it on the advice they received. They're overriding the advice they have received. Well, 
They're, they're yes, like that. but that's their call. They, that's right. they have the authority to do that. I don't think we have the authority to override their decision. We have the authority to make sure it complied with site plan approval. We have the we have the option of, of making sure the drain system complies and it works according to the way we view it and but the experts we have advising us. But the uh, I mean, Bill, your, your point is an excellent point, Bill. But from a philosophical point of view, just because they're the town doesn't give them the right not to comply like everybody else does. I remember when North Hadley Hall, they were talking about lead paint abatement and somebody wanted to, well, it's the town, we can excuse lead paint abatement. Only so yeah. much can a, uh, a town, we should set a good example, I guess that's what I'm Paul. saying. Paul. I have a question. If it went with the above ground uh, retention or drainage system, how long would it take, assuming it was totally full, how long do you think it would take to totally drain down? Six hours. Six hours? Yes. Okay. The state guidelines say it needs to drain in 72 hours to meet design criteria. Based upon this soil type um, and a conservative uh, uh, design criteria, it will drain in six hours. So not Basically enough time for mosquitoes. Right, and that, that's okay. the 72 hour criteria, so that it doesn't breed mosquitoes, so it, it will just drain in less than six hours. Mm -hmm. um, the, the senior center project and library project are, with their overflow storm lines, tying into the town system. We know that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I just I, I bring it up because I don't recall at, that, at those hearings that this topic being that heavy. That's all. Question. Designers. Speak up, please. I'm trying to. Um, I have a question for the designers. I'm trying to picture how the subsurface system works. And what I'm imagining is that you have a catch basin, you have a pipe, and that goes. That comes in above the stone in the chambers. It comes in within the height of the chamber. Yes. Right. And there's a. How, I mean, in general, how tall are those chambers? Have you ever seen I, a subsurface system? I put one in at, okay. at our post office. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, okay. Well, here's here's sort of a cross section. Uh, so there's are, an air pocket in there. Yeah. There, there's these are so, chambers essentially they're designed different ways. Perforated pipe. These are just the chambers. The, the gray area you see is crushed stone. So I'm thinking that there there might be an assumption that we're making here that maybe you'll you'll tell us is wrong. That. The bottom of that being at four feet is not truly four feet. It's not down below frost level. The bottom of that could freeze in the winter too. I don't think that's. If you have an air pocket in the air, that the outside air temperature can come down through the pipe. So that my concern is that if we push for an underground system because of the scenario of rain when the ground is frozen. I'm not sure that being down at four feet means that's not frozen too because it's not truly, it doesn't have four feet of soil above it to insulate it. It has an air chamber which, um, which if mosquitoes can get in there then the cold air is getting in there, no? Um, to be honest with you, I'm pushing for the surface, the surface system but I'm not going to there's a heat retention that's down here, um, and this is air pocket. So to be down four feet, there is a potential for it to freeze, but the residual heat of the ground typically would prevent this from freezing. Um, so there's enough if you open a manhole, around it. Okay. you open a manhole and look down in, in uh, catch basins, you look at catch basins, the top is frozen, but the bottom typically stays wet. Um, okay. Septic tanks, same way. Um, I would say yes, you're right. It doesn't well, it might freeze in the center, <laughs> but the perimeter is going to probably be gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I got a question for the designer. Is that the system that you're pointing to? Is that vented? Is there a vent on that? Uh, it's vented through the ex entrance pipe. So, it, it, typically, the entrance pipe is okay. not flowing full. Um, if it is, it, it can blow out the other side. So. Essentially, it's vented going back, vented both ways, the entrance and the exit pipes. Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, of all the past underground storages that this planning board approved, there's not one that failed. 
Number two, our bylaw states that the um, Board of Health would be the ones to administer stormwater runoff, not the select board. Number three, the selectmen turned around and expense. You're darn right there's going to be expense, and the taxpayers are going to be fitting the bill, just like what they did when they bought the property. They didn't have the seller do a 21E, and they racked up a $9,000 bill that, this, that the taxpayers got to pay. This needs to stop. Back to the grease trap. Separate topic, but we're yes. on it. I can't fathom why this place would need a 1,500 gallon grease trap for a kitchen the size that you're putting in. It was a 20, I mean, this is against sewer regulations, so I'm just going to make a comment here. I worked in a place in Chicopee that has really strict sewer regulations. I mean, they're really stick. I worked in Springfield and Holyoke and Chicopee. Nobody can hold a candle to Chicopee's sewer regulations. For whatever reason, they are corkers on the regulations. And we had a semi-commercial kitchen with a 20-gallon grease trap. You've probably seen those. They're, they're like a, you can buy them like 400 bucks. They're cheap. And it worked like a charm. We cleaned it like once a year. If you're going to put a grease trap in, I'm not going to require you to. But I'm going to say if it was a grease trap, that would be the perfect grease trap. It's like 20 gallons, it handles 10 gallons a minute of flow. It works and it's easy to clean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and alleviates the concerns <coughs> of grease building up into the sewer system. A 15 gallon gun, my opinion, a 1500 gallon tank is not required for this place. Yeah. Enough said. Yes? No, I'm going to say, um, you know, I rely upon the Board of Health and the Sewer Commission to dictate what I need to do there. Um, yeah. I always ask the question from them, it's not my decision. Um, and typically the size is a minimum size, typically it's a thousand or fifteen hundred gallons is a minimum size that is a standard grease trap under Title V, which is for sanitary system uh, okay. But again, not to put words in your mouth, but you usually have a standard clause in your approval if you do approval oh, that I'll, I'll, any I'll other board here. approvals must be complied this, with. And if the Board of Health or the uh, Sewer Commission requires... Like I said, the, the grease trap is out of our jurisdiction. Yeah. That's, a sewer, that that's that the sewer commissioner and a DPW issue, not ours. Because... We're glad to comply. Okay. Must comply. What, what, whatever they decide with that. Mr. Chairman. Yes. We have a sewer commissioner sitting here, Joyce Jungle. I would ask her what those regulations are in the, in the uh, sewer regulations. She's a sewer commissioner. What are those regu uh, regulations and what do they require and why? Do you know? I don't have my handbook with me tonight, oh, so I can't God. answer that I, question. I, 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 Mr. Chair, yes. we did coordinate with the Board of Health and um, the DPW, and we did get approval to not have to install a grease trap for the project. Okay. Yeah. okay. We have that in writing also. That's, that's up to them, not up to us. Back to the drainage system. I like the underground system. I understand why the above ground system. What's your opinion, Mark? Other than the, you know, changing January, February conditions where you get rain on frozen, other than that, I would be for the above ground because I think it gives more, more filtration. So, uh, I'm not, I, I'm not asking for a 10-month opinion, I'm asking for a 12-month opinion. <laughs> um, being, being new to I don't have a 10-month opinion, a 9-month opinion. Good answer. <laughs> being new to the board, what is our history with requesting that of developers? Typically, I, when we have been given the choice of an underground versus, I mean, most of the time, when we have required, requested, required an underground system. And Not of, always. A lot of times, too, Mark, it's dictated by the amount of space they have. In other right. words, if they don't have enough space, they're going to put the underground system in. But it's been my opinion that they seem to work and they look neater. And the maintenance is 
is uh, certainly a lot, it seems to be a lot easier. The, one? the ones that are above ground, the cattails grow and they have to go to the Conservation Commission to get permission to clean them itself. It's, uh, Mark, would the, the type of plant in the uh, catch basin would be a type of grass? Yeah, we're, we're proposing yeah. a no mow fescue, so it's a mostly red fest, uh, different types of fescue, so they're very drought tolerant and they're uh, meant to grow to about maybe eight to nine inches, ten inches, and then they flop, and it doesn't grow much more than that. It also, it will choke anything else that grows there because that's the idea of that seeding from the no-mow fescue. Yeah, I, I think some of the issues uh, Joe brought up about, you see the detention basins with uh, the wet detention basins, they would hold water, didn't drain, um, and they do come cattail in little mini yeah. wetlands. Um, they passed regulation not too long ago that they don't call them wetlands if you have a strict maintenance history on the project. They cannot convert to the uh, yeah. regulatory wetlands. This is a system that is designed to be nine inches deep, drained to zero within six hours after a storm. It's not going to be conducive to uh, cattails or a wetland vegetation type of scenario. And if you do see that, it's time to mow it and, and take care of it. I am and sympathetic to the fact that the select board is looking for the cheap, now, the cheap way out. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, the uh, <laughs> least expensive, way. least expensive way out. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm again. We we don't design for what comes in. If they if they come in with something that meets state law um, and doesn't otherwise offend our local sensibilities, uh, I'm willing to defer to. Especially in this case, when it's the town that's proposing it, I'm willing to go along with it. Let them, uh, you know, but. If it doesn't work, they still may have to come back in and install an underground system, but it seems like giving this a chance to work uh, may be a time and money saver. Well, you know, Mr. Dreyer, you said the right thing, deferred. That's the trouble with this whole town. Stormwater drainage has been deferred so bad, the pipes don't get replaced until the road caves in. The drainage that the state and the town sheds off into private property, they put all that on a farmer's thing. Sure, you're right, it's deferred. Deferred on somebody else's back because they fail to maintain. And now you're going to give them more to maintain? Just There's again. maintenance required, Matt. What system do we put in? Um, again, it is a first alternative that I we know. will like, put My in. concern is that the... That if it's the first alternative and the prices come in even a dollar above the price, it's not going to get done. Whereas if it's required to get done, they'll find a way to make it get done. Okay. Um, you wouldn't be sitting there if that was his project done. But we are, they are working on a fixed budget. So if they have to do this, something may have to come off the other end. That's right. Don't be given the OPM another $50,000 change on it. Oh my God. If Stop the, the it. If we do the subsurface drainage, that has an overflow too, right? And, yes. that, and that also Terrible. ties into the same place as, as the as right. the surface yes. drain. Yes. They both function the same way. So they'll both hit the old so system. The old it's system. just the underground, we think, will hit it only right. in our worst. They're, they're both designed to hit at the same rate, basically. Mm -hmm. And you guys are architects. I'm I mean, certainly I have to commend Mark for being intellectually honest to say that, you know, they're both going to work and probably work in the same way. So it comes down to an aesthetic point of view. And this is not a deep pond. You know, nine inches of water is, is not a heck of a lot. So, I mean, if, if the developer, i.e. the town, favors that system, uh, we try not to design things for the developer. Well, but the, the town that favors the underground system is the town. The ones that are, and he, the, the town that favors the underground system knows what they're talking about. The town that favors the above ground system is doing it strictly 100% on cost. Yeah. 
That's that point. is true, but that is their policy call to make. They do not have to listen to the advice of the DPW director. I, I don't he just, I he don't. works for them. Then why have he, he, well, you I, I agree with that, but to me, the same sense. if my expert was telling me that I feel this is the way we should go, I would put a whole lot of thought into that right. and not base my decision purely on dollars and cents. I have a question for you on the DPW director. Is he a registered professional engineer? I have no clue. I don't, think that, I, don't, I don't see why that would matter. Yeah, the guy how, is he, how is he the expert then? Ask the town why they hired him. <laughs> how okay. did you hire him? I, I, I didn't say you did, but that's the thing is the guy, the gentleman has a whole lot of experience. He seems to be knowledgeable of what he's talking about. Okay. I don't know what his, his uh, criteria or his qualifications are. The one time we had a registered professional engineer, the gentleman wasn't exactly the most productive person in the DPW. The See. ones that we've had after him probably are not registered professional engineers, but I believe they're a whole lot more productive. So a registered professional engineer doesn't mean that you are an expert. It simply means that you knew how to pass an exam. Yeah. No, offense back. Back. <laughs> no, no offense to me either. Yeah, <laughs> you, learn you learn most of your stuff after you pass the exam. Well, you, well <laughs> you're going you're to know, know the book stuff. That's absolutely correct. Yes. I have another question. Yes, sir. At the last meeting, I was on the other side of the table. There was a question asked about what what the additional cost is estimated for the underground system. And at that point, it didn't, it didn't sound like you had a number and you threw a number. Have you since then had a chance to look at it? And that was what they went back to look at. Yeah, I, I did not come up with a cost estimate. Uh, that was the, o, the, o, the OPM said he was going to go back and come back no, today. I, that, did, I did not say that. No, you no. said you were going to investigate this. No, I did not. I said somewhere around 100 to 150 grand based off of estimates that we've had on past projects. For example, the senior center project. I, I, I agree with and that. And I, I feel comfortable with that estimate. Okay. But, but you said you were going to go back. And no, look. what I said was we haven't done that. That's what I said. No, no my, my comment is when we had our last meeting, you said you were going to go back and investigate the grease trap and the yep. underground system. Yep. What did you come up with? So as a project team, we decided that we were directed by the select board to have the underground system as an adult. So that's how we're presenting the stormwater drainage system to you all tonight. For the grease trap, we coordinated with the Board of Health and the DPW, and we got in writing that this project doesn't need a grease trap. Okay. Have you changed your mind, Joe? You still like the above ground versus the underground? Uh, I'm kind of going for the above ground because it, ultimately the flow coming out is going to be the critical thing. And uh, it's going to be the same whether it's an underground or a, uh, a detention pond type of a drainage system. And it's the, it's the selectman's call if it screws up. Yeah. The There'll be somebody right. else in office and they won't get the blame anyway. Yeah. Don, have yeah. you, do you have any opinion? Vote me out like they did someone else. I try to ask questions. I'm pretty much on the fence. Um, <laughs> I'm on the fence too. <laughs> um, I guess I'm, it's a hundred thousand dollar extra. Up to 150. Yeah, well. 100 to 150. What, what is the incremental cost of doing the above ground system the, the the difference between the two the above ground system basically you're excavating a depression and moving the dirt around and and the fact that we have the ability in this situation to sheet flow the water from the building and from the driveway overland grass into this basin and we have an exit pipe up the other side so that's the the construction technique and what's involved the subsurface, you have to put in the catch basins, you have to put in the piping, you have to put in the stormwater detention system, you have to put in manholes, and you have to install this underground, to buy and install this underground system. And if you go with the above ground system and it doesn't work, you can go back and install an underground system? Absolutely, yeah. You yeah, want right. footprint, but yeah, that would be 
dig up the parts. That's a full hardy yeah, cast. Right. But based upon the safety factors that we've learned about tonight, what do we think the real probability is of a failure? And when the repair is basically scarified the top six, seven inches. And We're really talking about winter conditions here. There's no doubt the underground system will work better in winter conditions. In the summer conditions... I don't want to... Uh, might throw something out. Um, hmm? I might throw something out. I don't want to, want to bet it with our client first. <laughs> but uh, in a previous project at uh, the gas station on Route 9, um, one with the landing lights, they had a infiltration basin behind their store. I was the review engineer at that point in time. And the concern was the same thing that done as other projects is the issue is to get the ground water into the ground below frost. Um, even just to put in a small dry well in the middle of this basin with a uh, drainage grate. So in the cold season, the water still has an avenue to get into the ground through the frost, uh, even in a worst case scenario. And the cost associated <coughs> with that is essentially a concrete dry well and a grate put into the middle of this as an emergency entrance into the subsurface soils. So you get around frozen soils. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a huge expense, but it does allow a vehicle for that water so it won't be standing there. It has an, an ability to get below frost and into the surcharged, I mean the, the um, unfrosted, uh, unfrozen so, ground below. Seems like it's a, a secondary emergency uh, belts and suspenders which helps alleviate some of the concerns about if the frozen conditions and it gets frozen, where's the water going to go? It's going to spill out. It's a second avenue. You know. It would be ignored in the drainage calculations. It's just a safety valve. Okay. So I remember that that project, the gas station project, the neighbors were really concerned, and I think it was pointed out that if the there's a layer of clay that's keeping the water from infiltrating. And if you punch through the clay, it's sand underneath. And in that case, you were able to promise, uh, or the developer was able to promise that he would improve neighborhood drainage with, um, if they could get through the clay to the sand. And as far as I know, they did, because we haven't heard a peep about it. It's worked for yeah. 20 years. I remember, I remember reviewing the project 20 yeah, years ago. That, that's, they, they were, Unfortunately, from to, to use the words of the abutter, um, she was unfortunately happy or satisfied. I mean, that, that, that's a perfect example of a large paved area going to a uh, depressed recharge basin, and it's been functioning well for 20 years. I'm guessing it was 20 years ago. I remember reviewing that. And it does have that safety valve on it, uh, which is very somewhere less severe than this. I think that was what I was trying to get at earlier, but I guess I wasn't using the right terms, that there is some way to make it, I was talking about making it bigger, but making it, you know, effectively building a basement makes it bigger. Uh, yeah, it not so much increase the storage. I mean, we can make this basement better, but the concern is if it's frozen, how is it going to get in the ground? So um, if you have at least an avenue to do that. So, so what you're saying is in the middle of the Bring it base, and you would put essentially a, a, a dry well or two. Yes. And typically, what I would do on those, uh, I like to do, is raise it up a couple inches above the basin, so that all the water doesn't always go in there. I want it to go and filter through well, the you ground. Gotta, you also want to make sure that. The, the so just when it's not functioning, it, can, it will go in there. So it's an avenue to get back. I've seen those in some of those. That's what that's about. Yeah. You put like a, like a beehive grate on it, mm -hmm. and it's off to the side. You don't have to be in the middle. It can be off to the side, so actually tucked into the wall if you want to. It's just a word about the elevation, not the location. Um, and so it's a safety valve to, again, allow us to get into the um, unfrozen, so the through, through the frozen surface, I should say. Yeah. It's like yeah. your overflow drain on, on your right. bathtub. Just yeah. don't hit it with the lawnmower. That's the only hazard. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that's why you want it up to the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if there's only one. Yeah. 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 Again, it's not designed to accommodate all the storm, but it, it's a safety valve. To, so it's not a huge expense. I'm is this in the spirit money of, here. Of I'm trying to do it wisely. Is this in the spirit of compromise? Yes. Uh, 
it seems like well, a logical. Kind of, I mean, I'm concerned. <clears throat> I want things to work. No, no, I mean, it's Mr. Bichkowski. Yeah, the underground has got a sediment uh, basin to collector and oil separator in there. This system has nothing but a grass filter. When I talked to DEB in Boston, and I said, this is what they're proposing to catch any oils or gasoline that ever spilled out in the, in the lot. Right in there, right into the North Hadley Pond. Not, there's no oil separated there. The underground has one. This but I guess they don't care about polluting the North Hadley Pond either. DEP is responsible for that for the state of Massachusetts. And this system meets all DEP criteria. The so I, I like I like the idea of the of the drywall and the thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the winter conditions. That certainly seems to be an option. Yes. You know, I mean, that can't cost. I can't speak for the whole. That, I mean, they, that can't be a fortune. No. 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 So you're talking now. The compromise position is to have the detention pond with a. Uh, Carbon infiltration system. Right. Dry well. Six, 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 six well. Dry well with a beehive grade on the top to go down four feet or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. How big is that dry well? Mm -hmm. Dry well area, square footage. Well, what is it? Just a teacup you're going to make there? It's going to provide an avenue for the water to drain. To drain. How big of a storage though for on the ground? Would you still require that there was still be a right? Does it allow a, an exit other than through infiltration? How um, big of a square footage? It depends on what size they put in, John. Oh, well. Well, you can put in a four foot, six foot. When are you going to tell them? Oh. Typically, After you put in a perimeter Typical before. scenarios, you put in a six foot diameter, <laughs> perforated drywell, concrete drywell, surrounded by probably two feet of stone around the outside. That's a, that's a good size system. I'm just thinking for that. Yeah. It allows the surface areas, you need all the external surface areas as well, not just the bottom, but the entire outside circumference as well. Yeah. So it's a, it's a large surface area. Okay. I'll go for that. You're a sharp line mark. <laughs> That's why you can take the big bucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he cut the but baby I, in I half. That the the half the that. That's right. I mean, that, that sounds like a. Good. My, guess, my concern is if, you know. Yeah. Sounds like a good uh, okay. alternate. So based off of that, Mr. Chair, it would be I great if we could much. not okay. have the underground system as an adult and put in, we had deduct ultimates in there in the case <coughs> we were overbid. So we would like to be able to put those back in. The who's? So we had planned for some deduct alts in the event we came in overbid. So okay. we could remove some scopes. Um, we would like to be able to put those back in. So part of the state, and you have alternates. I know. Yeah, no, it's just, yeah. yeah, you go with the number one. Right. And beyond that, <coughs> I'm going you, order. Only, you only go to what you can afford. Right. Right. So you, can't, you, can't, you can't cherry pick. So when we were told to put the underground as an alternate, we had to take out the deductals. All right. This sounds pretty fair. How much did you take out? I don't even know the cost of it. That was, that was a selectman. Alternate, not us. Big B. Right. That is our that is our <laughs> resident expert drainage guy over there. He came up with that plan. We'll make a conditional motion. Uh, subject, to, I mean, subject to back with the design. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not thinking there's any reason why. Yes, we'd want to have that. We one of the requirements, one of the standard conditions is that we get a revised set of plans showing everything that has been agreed to with your certification that typical it is everything is incorporated. But I think that is not you know, going with the surface with the as long as we just can always go back to the tape if it ever becomes an issue. But uh, <laughs> um, I think we can give an approval conditioned on just saying that, that will be done. Okay. And uh, and then what if the uh, selectmen vote to not do it? Then what are you going to do, Mr. Dwyer? Then they would be in violation of the terms of their approval. Then what are you going to do? They don't get a building permit. You're going to do nothing. I'm not sure that they'll approve That's what you're do. So, um, so let me just, uh, 
Uh, what is the revision date of the latest set of plans? Time so outside. Give me one second. I'll bring the. And the waivers were for traffic study and for particulate. Is a TSS removal. Yes. Yes. Removal. And the emergency and at emergency drive. TSS is total suspended silence. Yeah. Where the sign is uh, last revision is March 25th, 2019. Okay. Yes. To be revised to show surface infiltration. With backup catch basin, backup drywall, minimum six foot five. That's six foot the end, right? Sure. Six inches deep. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So you want to talk this it? out? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the application for site plan approval uh, based upon findings that the project satisfies the general purposes of the site plan approval bylaw, not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Intended uses are not prohibited by the bylaw. Work to be conducted in accordance with the uh, set of plans dated, most recently revised, 325.19 to be further revised to show the, sub, the surface infiltration option with a backup six inch diameter dry well. Six foot. Six foot diameter dry well, yeah. Um, waivers, uh, TSS removal at emergency driveway, and the traffic study is waived. Copies of the plans have been distributed as provided in the bylaw. Project as amended satisfies the site plan review criteria. Uh, the design features, including but not limited to landscaping, are considered to be an integral part of the approval. Approval is for the following use only, uh, North Hadley Fire Substation. Um, sign detail is approved. Uh, landscaping must be installed, maintained, and replaced as shown on the plans. Any outdoor lighting uh, shall be shielded. No storage trailers. Uh, subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission, uh, Hadley Water uh, Commissioners, uh, and state agencies with jurisdiction. Uh, reviewed for compli uh, compliance by an independent consultant. Um, required front yard setback will be identified prior to construction. And um, the approval uh, should not become effective until uh, the notice of decision is incorporated with the original site plan. And the applicant's engineer certifies that the conditions set forth herein are noted and incorporated into the site plan. That is we have a second. Second. I forgot to ask, does anybody in the audience have any further comments on this before we vote? Well, okay. what, what difference is it? Don't make one difference, is it? Well, the neighbors were, 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 were had comments about the trees and everything, the, the, the plantings and the shrubs the last time. That you, are, you are satisfied with what they're proposing? Um, yeah, they said they would move them over right. <clears throat> a little more. Yeah, and they moved them to the front some. This forward to the for, towards 47, right? No, or no, it's 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 just closer to the property. Oh, closer to the fire station. I'm sorry. Yes, showing 30 feet. 30 feet. Right now. Yeah. And, and the request was to move on a little bit further. And you opened that her view to the meadow. Yeah. There's a mound there. Yeah. In front of the arbor thing. Short. So that that will be reflected in the revised the plans. plans. Yeah, make okay. sure you yep. two get together to understand. Yeah. What's going on. Okay. Yeah. Just, just I got one sure. last comment. Yeah. yeah. If the system fails, you guys up there are going to look pretty stupid. Okay. 
you're going to work with the with, yeah. with yeah. Carlos. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any ups, any nays? Motion passes four zero one abstentions. Any good? You wrote him something. Uh, is that a roll? No, there's no one yet. There's no one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go back. So, uh, right here is no. We have one more motion. So I will make a motion to uh, approve the application under the under Section 26 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw for Erosion and Sediment Control for Stormwater Management Permit uh, based upon the following findings. Uh, provisions do apply. Project is not exempt. Proposed site work is consistent with the provisions. The proposed site work satisfies the performance standards. The proposed site work meets the design standards. That's the motion. That's the motion. We have a second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Any opposed? That motion passes 401 abstention. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, you have a section. You have a I have nothing else. <laughs> Adjourn. No vote. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. And thank you, John. <laughs>